intrinsic part of the game between uh, Hawthorne and Richmond. Hawthorne, the uh, home team, of course. And umpire Glenn James officiating today with umpire Tony Bryant. Kershaw got the first tap down from the centre. Matthews has it. Hawthorne kicking against the breeze. It's fairly strong. The ball dropping down at centre half back. And the mark has been taken by Mervyn Kane. He should kick the ball long with this breeze. A breeze that I would estimate around about four to five goals. Uh, to the advantage of the side having the use of it. So Kane now right from the centre of the oval, going out wide, the attacking side of the ground is to where he's placed the ball. It's come out toward the back of the pack and picked up by Mew. The hand pass comes to Kershaw. Kershaw's hand pass to Tuck. Tuck going from centre wing. To try and keep the ball down fairly low, but no, he got it up a bit higher than he wished. Goes up to the forward pocket, could have been a free kick to Michael Byrne, that has been paid by umpire Glenn James, and he will take the free kick from the forward pocket position. He will be sheltered a little bit from the breeze by the Carlton Social Club stand, so that gives you an idea exactly where he is. And you can see it on screen, of course. Burn, a very difficult shot toward goal, but see how he goes. Left foot kick from Michael Burn, straight across the face, right across towards the boundary line. No mark taken, it's off the hands of the pack, actually hit the behind post, so a throw will take place directly beside that behind post. Few positional changes made, Bob? Yes, Jack. Uh, Wiley, uh, not the real positional change. He and Waitman have just swapped places. So Waitman opening up on the ball. And uh, Hawthorne have opened with Kershaw in the first ruck. Uh, that means Peyton has gone down onto the forward line. And uh, Robertson has gone to half-back flank in place of Polkinghorne to pick up the elusive Bartlett. Well, there's a shot. Ludwig. Good goal. First goal of the game by Ludwig against the breeze. Hawthorne getting a good start there, Bobby. You'd have to say that, wouldn't you? Yes, and uh, Ludwig has been a very fine player in uh, his first uh, year for Hawthorne. He's a courageous young player who is a, a busy little fellow. And at the moment he's started off on the half-forward flank because Hawthorne have opened with Lee Matthews on the ball. Yes, Lee Matthews actually took the first tap from Kim Kershaw. Emmett Dunn, Kershaw. No, not much result from that. Hooked out. Brian Wood. 55 metres out from goal, the kick in toward the forward pocket, up they fly, tipped it away, the ball is out of bounds, a boundary throw and will take place in the forward pocket for Richmond. Wood just couldn't get enough depth into that kick and uh, couldn't get through for a score, but Richmond into the attacking position in the forward pocket. O'Halloran taking it from the boundary throw in, went for a hand pass and over the boundary line it goes again for another one. Kevin Bartlett appealing for the free kick, but uh, none forthcoming. From the throw in. Roach up high, got, actually got the tap towards Wiley, but it's forced through for one point. Richmond's first score, so it's one goal to Hawthorne, one point to the Tigers. Calvin Moore putting the ball back into play. That'll be the defensive side of the ground. He's going very short. He might, Matthews might get it. It's out of bounds, a bit of free kick. It'll be a free kick to Richmond from that boundary, uh, oh, the out of bounds decision from the fullbacks kick in that not being touched. It doesn't have to go out on the full. So from wide out. We find Mervyn Kane with a lovely looking kick. Right on the line, Calvin Moore up high, puts it right onto the goal post and one point only the result. Nice shot, wasn't it, by Kane? Lovely kick, Jack. Mm, good shot. Well, two points, Richmond, Hawthorne, one goal. Calvin Moore using it a bit longer this time, going out toward the outer side. Kennedy got the ball to ground, a big pack of forming up. Don't probably set a free kick going the way of Hawthorne. It will be taken down there by Kershaw. Got a hand pass working. Chris Mew gets around Cloak, almost smothered by Rioli, but a nice kick from Mew over the head of Matthews. He's well backed up down there by Tuck. A hand pass from Tuck. If it bounces, now it bounces back to Tuck. Now he gives it on to Matthews. Chance of another score as Matthews goes. Goldwood, one point only. Nice piece of football. Big crowd. Oh, around about the 25,000, I would estimate, at this stage. Could get more. Mickey Malthouse, the outer side. Emmett Dunn, yes, takes the mark. Quite a back flank. Then the half back flank position outer side should come in towards centre half forward now and centre the ball up more. We tried to do that. It favours Green. Ball punched away by Wood, picked up by Wiley. Wiley from the centre of the ground going out toward the outer half forward flank. Robertson's there will be his free kick. There's no doubt about that one, Jack. Colin Robertson. Would have come across the ground, but Cloak was there to spoil it away. Mark missed there by Peyton. Knocked on by Jess. 
Picked up again by Landy, and the left foot kicked up towards the half-forward line. Over the head there of a Welsh. Bad bounce for Robertson, but he's able to go on. Get the hand pass up. Taken by O'Halloran. The short kick from O'Halloran. Straight over the boundary line, and a free kick will go out there to Michael Roach. No, Roach uh, doesn't look like he's going to take it. Might be Barry Rollins. The umpire is not quite sure who's going to take it. And coming down to take it is Peter, Peter Welsh. Welsh. <laughs> so, so they raffled it, and Welsh had the winning ticket. Welsh on the half forward flank on the outer side wouldn't make the distance. The breeze will push it, they have a tendency to push it out of bounds if it keeps close to the line. It is close to the line. Robertson there, and Robertson's mark for mine. Yes. Yes, not a doubt on that one either. So Colin Robertson. Not the task that not many half back flankers relish. I don't think he should no, come across Kevin here. Bartlett. I don't think he should come across here. Into the breeze. He's absolutely ridiculous. Well, now that puts Wood in the position with the breeze right behind him. He's 59 metres out, 60 metres out from goal. He could just about make the distance. The torpedo punt rubbles off the boot. A chance, though, O'Halloran got the fist to it, punched it down to Ward Kennedy. Wiley swoops on it. He's in trouble on the boundary line. It's been picked up by Ayres, but it ricochets off the players and it goes out of bounds. But that wasn't very good defensive work by Hawthorne to bring the ball on the attacking side of the ground. Mew and Cloak. Mew and well, Cloak actually got the tap, but I think both players had their hands on it. But it was going in the direction of the Richmond goal through for one point. The breeze here at Prince's Park favouring the scoreboard end of the ground and could be a four to five goal breeze, but Hawthorne had two scoring shots against it so far. We've been playing six and a half minutes of the first quarter. Kelvin Moore going out toward the outer half back flank position. Ball punched down by Kershaw, but the umpire said there's a free kick in there. Didn't actually see what decision he gave. He must have, uh, hands must have been over the shoulder, Bob, were they? I didn't see it myself, Jack. There was a fairly big pack of players in there. Now they're sorting out who is to take the free kick. I don't think they've worked that out yet either. Mervyn Kane and this. Well, he had a, a long shot toward goal before. I would say he would have a chance to score, but the breeze could be difficult to control. Lovely kick as far as distance is concerned, but the breeze taking control puts it through for one point. The reason Mervyn Kane is so far down the ground is that he's got the job of Lee Matthews. And so Matthews, after going back to the half forward line and uh, allowing Lovridge to go onto the ball, Kane has gone everywhere that Matthews has. Force forward there, Emma Dunn picks it up. The hand pass over the top, Jeff Rains comes in, hooks it too far. And it's through for another point. Well, Richmond on the board. Have a look at their shots. Five shots for five points. Hawthorne, one, one, seven points. A time clock up toward the 13-minute mark. Sorry, the eight-minute mark of the uh, first quarter. Not a great deal happening yet. It's going to be a game of defences, I would think, today. Fly high. The ball comes out the back of the pack. Rioli can't get it yet. He's onto it now. He kicks along the ground and tried to follow it through. Wiley put himself in position to pick up a free kick, which should have been played, I thought. Uh, Wood's looking for the ball to come out from Ross, but it comes to Rowlings instead. It's kicked high. Popping Horn under it. Should have taken the chest mark. Tried to take a difficult grab. Could have been a free kick against Dunn out there, but the hand pass favours Hawthorne, and Hawthorne into attack now through Wallace. And it's all Jimmy Jess. Jimmy Jess on the back pocket position. He'll kick it long, I would think. And that he does. Lovely kick from Jim Jess. And a good mark for Chris Mew. Wonderful mark, Chris Mew. See, they're hard to take. One hand, he was going backwards. Now he's going to play on. The umpire's called play on as Mew put the ball on the left foot, looking for Peyton. And Peyton took the free kick. A 15 metre penalty could have been applied, but he's played on quickly. With a hand pass across to Goad. Goad puts the short kick forward, thumped away by Martello. Martello follows on, shows good pace, a shocking kick though, Loveridge gets it, the hand pass smothered by Dunn, Kershaw coming through, but uh, Jeff Rains took the ball away, a good tackle by Loveridge, sees the loose ball out towards Kennedy and Rioli, Kennedy forcing the ball out in front of him, under pressure from Rioli, but Kennedy, up, well, up to the task, gathers the ball in, gets away from Rioli, but it had gone over the boundary, and the throwing will take place. So on the centre wing position out of side, the boundary throwing coming in now as uh, Kershaw and Dunn get in there, Dunn got the tap down but has gone straight back over the boundary line for another throw in nine and a half minutes have gone in the first quarter on Sevens Big League and Hawthorne won one seven points Richmond no goals, five points driven forward for the Hawks Here's Lee Matthews 
Rollings in the way, so a wobbly kick from Barry Rollings. Back towards Matthews again, couldn't hold the mark. Follows on, gives away a free kick, tackling too high. And so we'll find the free kick to go the way of the Tigers' Robert Boyle. He's in a position 65 metres out from goal. Go for a pass, I think, to one of the forwards. The leads are there. Roach is there. Oh, O'Halloran, good mark. And O'Halloran has taken more marks this year than anybody else in the league, Jack. So that's a dangerous bit of work, though, after a good piece of uh, play. But the hand pass comes back out to Goss. Goss got it going again. And it's Green getting the ball, working up to the half forward flank. Here's Tuck coming on the scene. There's a chance of a score. Tuck picks up, shoots the ward. Goal! That's a good goal. Kicked by Michael Tuck. I could just about read that, Bobby. You could see him coming in. He had enough time to swing and get the boot to ball and put it through for Hawthorne's second goal. A very good goal indeed. It was a great goal by that. Uh, he uh, was speaking to uh, Peyton, and that's why Peyton probably looked a little casual. He allowed the ball to run straight past him. And uh, Tuck, we could see him measuring it up, Jack. Yes, he sort of had it just about a goal before he picked it up, if he can ever do that. But uh, it looked obvious to us up here anyhow, and it's come up. 2-1, 13, Hawthorne, Richmond, five points. Centre bounce, Kershaw and Dunn. Kershaw got the tap, goes straight to go, the quick hand pass across to Wood. Wood gets it to Wiley, Wiley's kick off the side of the boot, in the way is Green, and Russell Green takes the mark. Was thinking about playing on, now does so, puts it towards centre half forward, in the way will be Jimmy Jess, no Hawthorne player there, and Jimmy Jess takes an easy mark. He'll kick this one long again. Now he got a hand pass out to Malthouse. He passes on once again. And Strawn of Richmond taking a bounce at half back, coming through that position down towards centre wing and placing the ball deep into the forward pocket. Players fly high. It comes from the hands of the players. Bartlett look for a crumb. The ball's kicked high in the air. Taylor under it. He got it. I didn't think he was going to take the mark, but he has. A lovely mark, Jack. He's a strong mark. Well, as strong as could be, yes. And uh, Calvin Moore. As we know, a wonderful fullback, not capable of getting it away from Taylor on that occasion. Well, he only has to kick 20 metres. Uh, the breeze, as I said before, could be the problem today. The players will have to calculate the strength of the breeze and aim a little bit to left, I think, with the post from here. Taylor's kick toward goal. Hit the post! Oh, well, six shots for six points, Richmond. So, Hawthorne, 2 one 13, Richmond, six points. O'Halloran to the outer side, a torpedo punt kick, working very well into the breeze, went right out toward Gator, couldn't take the mark. It's been picked up by Welsh, shot out quickly toward the uh, half-forward flank, Rioli after Kennedy's there, and will be a free kick, I think, to Rioli, the umpire has paid. So he'll go back now behind the mark to take the kick, umpire James indicating where the mark will be, and Rioli about to take off now for Richmond bringing the ball into attack. A left foot kick from Rioli, a lovely kick up towards the forward area. Cloak up high, couldn't take the mark, but a free kick has been found. Calvin Moore will take the kick. Pushed in the back, the umpire said. Moore thinking about coming to the members' side, but changes his mind very quickly and goes to Ward Payton, opposed to Jess. Two Hawthorne players uh, messed it up between them. Range got the ball working down toward the full forward zone. And Roach outmarked O'Halloran. Now, O'Halloran had the front berth, but Roach too tall, Bob. On that occasion, yes, Jack. I was just thinking uh, how the Hawthorne players do have attacking their minds because they keep looking to this, what normally is the yeah. attacking side of the ground. But it's worked so far with 13 to 6. Maybe now it'll be 13 to 12. Or will it be 13 to 7? Roach, 30 metres out from goal. The kick from Michael Roach. It is 13 to 12 because Michael Roach brings up Richmond's first goal with a well-placed kick. Well, after six shots, the six points, Richmond 1-6-12, Hawthorne 2-1-13. It's a well-directed kick and a lovely mark by Michael Roach. He certainly used his height to great advantage. That he did. From the centre bounce, it will be Kershaw and Dunt. Emmett Dunn of Richmond, Kershaw... Kim Kershaw, that is, of Hawthorne, formerly of Richmond and South Melbourne. Wallace got the ball, gets pushed in the back, and so we'll take the free kick. Now, just see where he's going. Uh, I think he should go straight up the ground, not much point going anywhere else. That he does. Peyton in front of Jess. Jess up. Peyton, no, no, Mark paid. Tuck off the ground. Got a chance for Tuck, about the same position, a difficult shot. He hooks it around, he hooked it too far. A chance for Matthews, opposed to Rioli. Rioli punches it away from Matthews and through for one behind. Defensive work by Rioli there. Matthews had the front position. Rioli couldn't get in to take the mark, so he's spoiled. 
Malthouse. Short passes in from the full back position, taken by Kane. No one to give it to yet. All the Richmond players are cut. Oops! Play on, uh, kicked by Kane. Down the warden centre wing. A chance for Wallace. Got bumped aside. Picked up. Oh, there could have been a trip in there. The umpire called play on. Wood goes down, tackled by Kershaw. And now the umpire set a bounce. Not hard to, it's a bit hard to see which the way the supporters in front of us thought that free kick should go there. I'm not too sure of myself. <laughs> Still Kershaw and Dunn. Dunn got in the front position, but Kershaw got the ball out to Goss. Goss puts the ball in towards the centre. Peyton taps it on. Good play by Peyton, but he just missed Goad. Goad gets bundled out of the way by Welsh. And uh, Welsh tries to break through the pack. Does so. Gets out of the fine side. The ex Hawthorne player puts it over the half forward line. Taylor up high. Thumped away by Kelvin Moore. Then we see Ayres put the kick out wide. But another ex Hawthorne player in Matthew Rollins in the way. There's a call. There's a short run into Wait, but he can't find him yet. While he's there, Ayres is there for Hawthorne. He could be looking for the boundary line. And the umpire said a boundary throw and will be affected some 45 metres away from the Richmond goal. Hawthorne 2 2 14. Richmond 1 6 12. And the time clock approaching the 16 minute mark of the first quarter. Ball comes out now to Wiley, the quick hand pass across to Waitman. Waitman looking for Taylor. It's Taylor and uh, Moore. Neither player could get it. A quick snap by Rollings, offline, and only one point. I think it was touched anyhow. Taylor asking for a free kick down there. He said Moore was hanging on to him, uh, which I wouldn't have been surprised had he been doing that, but the umpire said no free kick forthcoming. Uh, Richmond 1 7, 13 points. One point behind Hawthorne, 2 2, 14. But half the first quarter gone, and Richmond haven't yet capitalised upon the strong breeze blowing out here. Bad uh, effort to mark there by Polkinghorne. That's twice now that Polkinghorne has missed marks that he should have taken. Should have taken them on the chest instead of out in front of him. I can't quite agree there, though, Jack. You don't know who's coming from behind, so you have to <laughs> put those hands out in front. Welsh ran over the boundary line, a throw in to take place. Oh, well, Hawthorne are doing it well so far, Bob. Nearly 17 minutes gone, and Richmond uh, are still trailing after having or having the use of the breeze. Yes, Kershaw now giving away a, a point, a free kick, I should say. Emmett Dunn, I wouldn't think, would score from there because he's half kicking into the breeze. The breeze coming across uh, the ground from that position. He'll try and place it. Oh, he's brought it into centre half forward. Woods a chance to pick up the crumb. He's first to it. Bumped aside, it's been hurriedly put down by Cloak into the forward pocket, but that's the defensive side of the ground. And another boundary thrown will take place in that position. I think Emmett Dunn was trying to get that ball towards centre half forward, but miskicked it. Yes, I think he was dead. <laughs> it's not easy on days like today when it's so blustery. Cloak, a lovely knockout across the Waitman. He gets around, puts it across to Taylor. Great play by Waitman because he made no attempt to put the ball through the goals. Saw Taylor on his own and the little short kick across the ground put ta hit Taylor right on the chest. A wonderful piece of roving. Kelvin Moore trying to confuse Taylor with the angle, but it won't work. Taylor point blank range, 10 metres at the most. It's a goal. <laughs> Richmond move their score to two goals, seven, 19 points. Hawthorne, 2-2, two, two, 14. I did mention the great piece of raving by Waitman. Jack, it was an equally good piece of ruck work by David Cloak. Yes, it was, but it was good work there, Waitman's... Uh, Short kick was intended. A lot of people might, may have thought he would have had a shot toward goal, but that didn't happen. He just chipped it over the top of Kelvin Moore, who thought he had Taylor covered, but uh, such was not the case. It was very good thinking by Waitman, and well executed too, because the kick only travelled about, oh, I reckon, 12 to 15 metres. So we've lost a ball here at Princess Park. A new one is with us, and the umpire's about to move the game again. Five points in front of the Richmond team. Umpire James asking the Richmond uh, interchange players to sit down because they're running around the boundary line, but now back into the game. The bounce favours the big fellow in Dunn. It's well taken by Rioli. A left foot kick from Rioli towards centre half forward. Ayres comes across, tried to tap it towards Robertson, but then gathered the ball in himself. The left foot kick out towards half back flank, taken by Goad. A quick hand pass back to Kennedy. He gets around Waitman in fine style and then puts it up towards the half forward line. Peyton up high, doesn't attempt to mark, hooks it over the back. No forwards ready. Jess gets there first. Straight to Tup. Another chance of a goal. As Tup comes right up to the board. The goal. Tuck stopped the boot. And only one point. How far did he run? <laughs> he ran a fair way. Well, he should have got that one. A yeah. little bit too long to get balanced. He should have got a goal for his efforts. But Malthouse bringing the ball into play again. Oh, is a miss up. Could be a free or a tap try and hooks the ball out with his feet. Picked up by Kershaw. He's too slow to get hand pass working. Was caught in possession, but the umpire said a boundary throw-in. So the throw-in will be in the forward pocket for the Hawks. 
15 to Hawthorne, 19 points to Richmond, a four-point margin, of course, in favour of the Tigers, as Martello got the big punch, attacks back by the Tuck, missed by Kane, he gives away a free kick, a bad tackle on that occasion, and so we'll find Norm Goss with the kick, not an easy position to kick from, but he does have the shoulder of the stands. Yes, he would have to kick round about the 40 metres, the breeze right in his face. Off target badly. The umpire ran to say it's out of bounds. So it was a bad shot, but he's got a lot of breeze, or had a lot of breeze in his face then. So he was trying to put a little bit more into the kick, but it didn't work. Martello with a high kick. Oh, up high there. We saw the, the Hawks and look like Gary is, but he's well down the ground. Goss giving landing support, pushing the back almost to, to Reigns. Picked up by Waitman, he gets out of it in fine style, a lovely hand pass, on to Dunn, Dunn was looking for Rollings, who tapped it over the top, Payton comes through, can't quite gain possession, Emmett Dunn does, puts a spirally kick down, the two number eights, Roach and O'Halloran, O'Halloran gets fist the ball, taken by Mew, Mew well loses possession, picked up by Cloak, Cloak going goalward now as he puts the kick right across the face of goal, Kelvin Moore allows it to go over the line, knowing full well that he was going to get a free kick anyway. He's on the attacking side of the ground now, I don't know... He can if he wishes to go the other way, but he's going to come up on the member's side. Oh, the ball's touched off the boot. O'Halloran's caught in the back. Yes, in the back. A bit lucky to get away with that. Yes, but uh, any tackle in that manner has been rewarded exactly that way. Oh, I think it's about the only way they can pay them, Bob. So, O'Halloran from the back pocket position. We've been playing 21 minutes in the first quarter. Richmond lead by four points. Emma Dunn punches the ball down. Wallace looking for the free kick. It was hard, they touched, he made sure the umpire saw that. It was good thinking on the part of Terry Wallace. He's bringing the ball up. Oh, Wood all by himself. No, oh, it's been, I was going to say, Straw nearly missed that. Got it on the second grab. He should go into Cloak at centre-half forward. Cloak will get into the pack, I think. He tried to knock the ball down. Actually, he's a ch chance for Mew off the hands of the pack. Mew taps it out for Robertson. Robertson's long hand pass to Goat. He better get rid of it quickly. Oh, he dumb it beautifully. Got a short pass out wide. Here's a chance for Kennedy. He's up near the half forward zone now. Oh, shocking kick. A chance for Bacanara. He's got it. Picks up, swings it up high. It's anyone's ball. It's a hard one to take. It's coming to no man's land. The wind actually held it right up. Kershaw tapped it out toward Tuck. It's Tuck and Jess. Jess looking for the boundary line. Tuck tries to hurdle him to keep the ball in play. Michael Tuck can't do a great deal with it. And the umpire said a bounce will take place in the forward pocket for Hawthorne. Not easy one to be able to judge that kick. Oh, the air. It floated everywhere. The big number 14 is Kershaw. Number 15, Martello. Waitman in the background, along with Michael Tuck. And by was Glenn James. In the back. No clear tap. Tuck comes through. Tried to get it out. Couldn't get the ball out clearly. It looks like it must be a Hawthorne free kick. A head high tackle. Terry Wallace. Well, this is about the same position that Normie Goss missed the shot before, Bob. So uh, Wallace has the, uh, the chance now to make amends for that shot missed by Goss. About the same distance, same position. Won't score, I don't think, or will it? Oh, just got in for one behind. I thought it was going to drop down in the goal square, which I think the Hawthorne players would have rather have, but it's Martello now to the outer side. Look at that one go. <laughs> Lurious kick right out towards centre wing. We only taps it on. Goat was first on the scene, kicks the ball off the ground. The free kick has gone prior to that, and it may be a free kick to Rioli. And a 15 metre penalty will bring Rioli down over the centre wing position. That was a magnificent kick back there. Here's Rioli playing on quickly, getting the ball moving into the arc to the goal square. Roach by himself, the ball thumped away, taken by O'Halloran, given out to Robertson, who's playing a defensive role today. Robertson looking in toward the centre of the ground, the kick off the boot, wobbles a bit up toward the centre, thumped out by Reigns, a chance for Kennedy, met the opposition head on. And now we see on the outer side, Goad with the left foot kick, looking for a teammate, can't find one. He may find the boundary line, that he has done, and we'll see a throw-in taking place in Hawthorne's half-forward flank, out of side. 24 minutes have gone the first quarter. Hawthorne doing well so far. They're only three points down to Richmond. Richmond have the advantage of a strong breeze. No clear tap. Picked up by Goad, looking towards centre-half forward. Goss couldn't take it. Oh, he should get a free kick, but it's none forthcoming. The loose handball comes out. Wallace comes across. Can't handle the ball cleanly. 
Rollins first there. Gets a quick hand pass in towards Landy. Landy ran into Tuck. Matthews coming through. Takes the ball away from Rollins. It's close to the boundary line. In the back should be paid. And that's exactly the way Lee Matthews finds. Well, he's got a more difficult shot. We've seen two miss from out on that pocket area. Matthews is further out. He'd be about 50 to 55 metres out, I would think. Be 50 metres anyhow. And the breeze will be right in your... Not quite right in his face, but across the kick, half and half. Kershaw there, just went the big spoil, comes down, picked up by Polkinghorne. The kick was smothered, and it may be a free kick in there or a bounce. No, it's been forced out of the pack. Another chance for Hawthorne to come forward now. Lee Matthews straightens up. After taking the hand pass from Lovridge, a good goal by the Hawthorne skipper. Hawthorne, 2-7. 3-4, 26 to Richmond, 2-7, 19. Well, that was a nice piece of work by Loveridge, getting the ball out to Matthews. And Matthews uh, didn't have a great deal of time, Bob, did he, to get the shot at goal, but he eventually got the boot to it and brought up the third goal. He's not one to worry about the players coming at him, Jack. No, never has been. Michael Byrne against Emmett Dunn. Neither player than the tap. Wallace comes through for the Hawks, puts the left foot kick forward. Payton in position. They have been playing. Richmond fans not happy, but I think it was fortunate for Richmond that it was paid because Polkinghorne had taken the tap and was streaming towards centre half forward. Payton putting the ball up long, a chance for Matthews. He's there, going to get it. No, he got the hand, so it can't hold the mark. Strength coming through here. Look at Kane tried to, or was it Strawn tried to force that in the back to Tuck? Will be paid. Hey, oh, gee, they're picking up a few of those in the back decisions, Bob. They're getting their body in over the ball and picking up the. Uh, the benefit of the umpire in decisions. I'm not saying the umpire is wrong, I don't think he is. If you're there first, Jack, you have the opportunity. Difficult shot by Tuck. The Breeze will have a tendency to push it away from goal. Stands could help if he doesn't get it up too high. And it's pushed away, or pushed right away. Up they fly, no mark taken by Peyton in there. The ball hurried out of the pack. Where'd it go? It's gone close to the boundary line. Welsh can't pick it up. No one can get it yet, the umpire said a bounce to take place right in front of the Hawthorne players race. And that's midway between half-forward flank and forward pocket, closer to the half-forward flank. Emma Dunn got the tap. Over the boundary line it goes, so this time we'll see a boundary throwing. Scoreboard showing Hawthorne 22 points and Richmond 19 points, three points in favour of Hawthorne. Richmond having the first use of the breeze and not doing a great deal with it yet. Emma Dunn getting the big tap out. Goad leads in the race for the ball. Wiley coming on the scene. Goad left the ball and uh, the shepherd. The free kick has gone again. No, it's gone to Goad. He said he got hit too high, so Goad picks up the free kick and everyone thought it would have been Wiley's free kick. Now Alan Goad got a, got a clip in the ear, evidently. He's on the centre wing, out of side. Not a bad kick into the breeze. Tuck's going to wait for the crumb to come down. There it is now. Oh, the umpire said there was a free kick in the pack, and it's gone to Jimmy Jess. No, it's gone the other way, just drawn. So it's Greg Strawn. And, well, really not going straight down the ground. Cloak leading out there. Burn up high, got the tap away. Goads first on the scene. The, the kick up towards half forward. Well smothered down there by Loveridge. Normie Goss gets a quick hand pass out wide to Poppinghorn. On now to Wallace. Wallace in towards centre half forward. Matthews. No free kick paid. And Kane comes away with the ball. The ball out towards centre wing. And Kane, Kane's kick well taken by Peter Welch. He's on the half back flank out of side. Kicking toward half forward. Cloak will try and get into the pack. And Cloak did some. Uh, but nudged out, the umpire said. Rioli played on, looking for his teammate downfield, uh, downfield, but the umpire said the ball has to go back where he had paid the free kick, which is on the point of the centre square, which will put Cloak out somewhere in the vicinity of about 65 metres from the angle he'll be coming. So uh, even though he has the breeze coming across the kick, he will get assistance from it, but it's not directly behind him. So Cloak will put it up for the forwards, hopeful that one of the high flies can take it. Cloak's kick, Taylor up high, couldn't quite take the mark, Green gets it to Goss, Goss puts Hawthorne out of the real danger area, straight into the arms of Jimmy Jess, and from there Jess could kick straight at goal. I think he will. Didn't quite get it, he's kicked it right down within 15 metres of goal, the hands go up and the mark has been claimed by Big Byrne, Michael Byrne, thought of a hand pass, changed his mind very quickly. At this now, stage, Jack, he should put the long kick out of, out of that flank, and that's just what he's done. Yeah, he's done it well, too. He put it to the outer side half-back flank. Kennedy in there doing the tackling against Kane. 
He taps the ball along the ground for Welsh to pick up. Welsh bringing the ball in toward the forward pocket. Byrne will fly high again, should spoil, he did it well. The ball tapped down to turf, and Robertson! Oh, a shocking kick. Off the side of the boot, if you call it that. It's out now on the outer half uh, forward flank. I think that's rolling from there. Can't quite see who it is. <laughs> no, that's not his best angle. Well, it should have been a free kick. <laughs> no, it's <against> Welsh. <laughs> it's Peter Welsh, and the umpire said a bounce would take place. He was making no attempt to get rid of that ball, but um, by Glenn James, obviously, on the blind side. The clock has ticked away to 30 minutes, so Hawthorne would be extremely happy at this stage. If Can they hang on? Welsh must get the free kick. The bad tackle by the Hawks on that occasion. Welsh will have the shot at goal, but it'll be a miraculous uh, kick from there because he is kicking uh, into the face of the breeze. So, uh, but better kicks or have been seen but no score from this one but like everybody from that position Welsh had to have the kick but it's quarter time and the scores see Hawthorne 3-4-22 Richmond 2-7-19 yep Hawthorne lead Richmond by three points. We start the second quarter at Princess Park. The game between Hawthorne and Richmond, of course, I've just said that, and picked up by Emmett Dunn. Hand passes back out to Wood. Look for Rioli. The tap came that way. Has a chance to pick it up. No, it eludes them all. It's kicked off the ground to Ward Welsh. Welsh gets the fumbles. Can't pick up cleanly. He still has it. He got out of it well. Or he hasn't got out of it yet. He's still in trouble. And the umpire said, hold on the ball. I think about time too I thought. he did give him enough time didn't he <laughs> he gave him plenty the long hand pass from Green out to Matthews Matthews gets the lead and finds Bacchanal with a lovely pass Landy a bit far up on the mark a 15 metre penalty now will be applied he wouldn't come back to give Gary Bacchanal the chance for a score Bob he's out about 60 metres but the breeze will be of great assistance to him coming right over his shoulder so it's Gary Bacchanal plenty of distance but it goes straight across the face of goal no, oh, you almost know, hit the mark to Byrne. Umpire didn't play it, I don't think. Yeah, he could have. I think he may have been outside of Jack. It was on the other side of the pack. Well, boundary throw in now, taking place. Hawthorne's forward, uh, Hawthorne's forward pocket hooked out the back to Bacchanara. It's been picked up and the shot by touch off target. Well, Richmond were way off target in the first quarter, kicking two goals, seven. And uh, Hawthorne kicked three goals for against, well, we say against the breeze. We haven't quite decided whether it's going to be a great advantage or not because in the reserve side, I saw six goals kicked in one quarter against the breeze. It is half across the ground, yeah. Jack. It's up into that forward pocket. Lovely kick there by Martello. Picked up by Reigns. Quick hand pass. Never done first there. Able to get it out towards Waitman. He overran the ball. Loveridge dives in there to take it away from Kane. Then Russell Green does exactly the same thing. And the, well, almost a tug of war between those two players. And umpire Glenn James will settle the tug of war by balling the bouncing the ball. It's on the centre wing outer side. The defensive side of the ground we've turned it this afternoon. Kershaw got the tap down. It's been picked up by Polkinghorne. Left foot kick. Oh, dropped an easy mark, Peyton. Got a hand pass working. Been tapped away. Another chance for Kane. Kane getting the ball working up toward Bartlett. Bartlett out in front took the mark. Will play on, I would think. He's going to swing around now. Bring the ball into attack. He kicks in towards centre half forward. There is a chance for a mark to Roach. Can't take it. Ball's on the turf. Roach is there. Oh, Rioli got around the pack. A hand pass comes out now. And it's uh, range going goal. It's a bit off target. It's swinging right away from the goal. And a mark taken by Kelvin Moore. So Kelvin Moore. Right on the goal line. As a result, cloak being brought back a little. Kelvin Moore goes straight down the centre of the ground. Kershaw in the front position. Thumped away there by the big fellow in Dunn. Waitman comes out. Beautiful blind turn. Dummies the hand pass. Then gives it on to Wiley. Wiley onto the left foot. Screws it back towards goal. Straight in the arm of Chris Mew. Hawthorne defenders standing up to the task at present. Hand pass to Loveridge from Mew. Out to Ayers. Ayers kick is smothered. And it goes over the boundary line for throw in. He should have given a hand pass over the top to Russell Green. Yes, he should have got it moving better than that. So, we find the boundary throw in. The big ruckman will be Cloak. Robertson comes down, Kennedy it was, came over the top. While he gets it, the oh. handball's over the head. And Chris Mew forces it over the boundary line. Well, he could term that hand pass of Wiley's a throw, wouldn't you? 
looked to me to be a throw, but anyhow. Not far off a jack, but uh, still, he punches it off the hand. That is the required thing. Kershaw couldn't quite get to it, and it's taken away this time by Ayers. A nice kick out towards centre wing. Tucks there as the ball taken away. Tapped on by Pockingham, but swooped it on by Reigns. Reigns the left foot kick up towards Wiley. Wiley traps it well. Under pressure from Loveridge, but gets a nice kick back towards centre half forward. No mark taken. O'Halloran comes on the scene. Tapped forward by Waitman. The Waitman gets the handball towards Cloak. Cloak steadies and puts in a shocker. One point only. Not a very good shot. 3-5-23 the Hawthorne score. Richmond 2-8-20. It appears that the breeze isn't having as much effect in this game as I first thought anyhow because Richmond have been doing all the attacking in the or most of the attacking in the second quarter and now we'll see the ball go back toward the Richmond forward line after Emmett Dunn gets it to his boot. He's right in the centre of the Prince's Park Oval or on the attacking side by a few metres. Got the ball up high, O'Halloran flying high to spoil, got the ball down to turf. Umpire call, play on. Everyone called for a free kick. A hand pass from Matthews finds Wallace. Payton in front of Jess. Oh, the top came back an arrow, but he didn't take the mark. And uh, the umpire said, it will be a free kick Richmond's way, and Bobby Skilton didn't agree. The kick there from Landy. Taken by Welsh, who's been a fine player so far. Welsh coming into the side as a replacement for Egan, who was selected on the wing. And uh, the two swap their positions. Taylor's called for it, the kick in that direction, and Taylor takes the mark. Well, this will test his kicking ability. He's out about 50 metres, possibly a little bit inside that. Has kicked one goal from much closer than this in the first quarter. So uh, we might get an idea of the breeze. If he gets a, a drop punt up, it might be held up. It's on its way, and it's through four, one behind only. So just off target. Got the distance all right. I think it went exactly where Brian Taylor wanted it to, Jack, but the breeze didn't come for forth. They must have had to, oh, more playing on from the full-back position. Getting boot to ball now. Big Emmett Dunn will fly the back of Kershaw, who tried to tap the ball forward, did so with some success. Hand pass from Goat finds Wallace. The kick, not a good one. For straight to Landy. Would have, been a, would have been a free kick had Landy not taken the mark. In fact, it's going to be a 15-metre penalty now against Normie Goss. So Landy now can play on, which he does. The left foot kick working over toward Brian Wood. He's pushed in the back by Green, but the umpire said play on there. Ayers takes the hand pass from Green, the kick up high to Bacanara, he's all by himself, and he thought of playing on, and the umpire has given him the benefit of the doubt. Yes, I don't think he went over the mark, Jack. Good kick. Kick towards centre-half forward from Bacanara. Payton from behind, no attempt to mark, that thumps, thumps it wide, Tuck coming across the front, couldn't quite gather it in the first time, and tried to give the hand pass, good play by Straw, though, to put him under all that pressure and take the ball away, and it was eventually forced over the boundary line. Good defensive work by Greg Storm. We're nearly seven minutes into the second quarter, Hawthorne lead by two points over Richmond, who would be favoured to take this game out today. Tapped down to the front of the pack uh, by Dunn and picked up by Rollings. He put it up high to the outer side, no mark it for mine to cloak. The umpire has said it will be a bounce. Couldn't be paid the mark. Had about the third grab at it. Uh, two other players touched it first. So it's a bounce halfway between the wing and centre of the ground. Cloak actually got the tap. It'll be a free kick to Robertson. Put his body in for his walls. No good Bartlett carrying on. He just right into the back of Robertson. Well, Hawthorne have been doing that today with a great deal of success. Kick by Robertson. Not such a long one. Payton will fly against Jess. Can't take the mark. Over the head of Dunn. Matthews out to play on with a free kick to Payton, pushed in the back, the umpire said. So Ian Payton from the point of the square will be out about 60 odd metres from where he'll kick, or he'll thought of a short pass into the pocket, I mean, that'll be the wise thing to do. Should put the ball up high because big Michael Burns down there for Hawthorne in the goal square. In fact, Payton will nearly kick the distance for mine. Well, he got the distance all right, but couldn't line them up properly, only one behind. Hawthorne, 3 7, 24. And uh, that should be 3-6 it is, 24. Richmond, 2-9-21. Three points the difference. Martello taking the gamble and coming out this side of the oh, ground. It's a gamble, all right. It comes off it so far. No, it hasn't come off. The tape comes out to Michael Byrne. On to Goad. Goad's kick off line. It's a shocker. Straight across the face of goal. Well, it almost didn't come off, Jack. No, it's very dangerous football, bringing the ball in from the full-back position at the scoreboard and onto the members' side because the breeze is coming 
directly over the headers of the players once they gain possession. Tap down by Byrne. It's in there that we look like Waite and he got the ball out. It's been picked up by Polby Horn. Thought of a hand pass. Actually hand pass to himself. Goss trying to get around. He got around all right. Handball from Goss to Loveridge on to Wallace. Wallace has kicked smothered off the boot almost and it's stumped through by Lauf Strawn. Taking that, uh, I won't call it the easy way out because uh, it's better to put it through for one point than it is to find that uh, uh, trying to keep it in play, you have the opposition kicking a goal. Hawthorne, four points in front of Richmond. 3-7 to 2-8, Martello kicking to the outer side. Looking for Jimmy Jess, who got the front position. Peyton may have got into his back, but the umpire's call play on. Peyton got it out to Green. Green gets it up to Robertson. A long hand pass from Robertson to Polking Horn. And back it comes to Robertson. This would be a score, I would think. A lovely kick from Robertson. And 12 points comes on the board. A great goal by the half-back flanker to take Hawthorne to 4-7. 31, a 10-point lead over Richmond, 2-9-21. Well, that was a good goal, all right. Kicked by Robinson. Good work by Polkinghorn. And uh, Hawthorne in front now by 10 points. Yes, they teamed well together then, Jack. They did. Umpire Bryant putting it down. Polkinghorn will do the ruck work. Oh, got it down beautifully, too, to Matthews, who walked through the pack. Gets it working into the ward, Bacanara down on the half-forward zone. Well, it's tapped out by Byrne. Can he get a foot to it? No, he's shot it out to Goss. Uh, Loveridge got it out. Goss can't get it working, and it's going to be taken away. Well played by Kane. Kane's well-directed kick. Couldn't quite get straight to Brian Wood. Wood and Green out very close to the boundary line. Green gets a hand pass to Ayres. Ayres gets pushed as he's about to kick the ball, and I think was over the line before he did get boot to it. Hawthorne 4-7, Richmond 2-9, 31 playing 21, Hawthorne in front, the time clock is 10 and a quarter minutes into the second quarter and seven's big lead. Kershaw, got the, uh, the shoulder right over the top there, Pope, no doubt about that free kick. Well, he's out on centre wing, going around the flank more than in toward the uh, centre of the ground, Roach can't take the mark, it's on the turf, Robertson looking for the boundary line has found it, and we'll see a boundary throw in taking place. Oh, nearly the forward pocket for Richmond, you'd call it. Halfway between the flank position and pocket position. Favouring the forward pocket. Be out about 50 metres from Richmond's goal. Cloak beaten by Kershaw. The ball comes to turf. Robertson in the thick of things down there. Couldn't quite get that out cleanly. He's in there once again doing battle. And the umpire said... Against Bartley, could have got the ball away. Kevin Bartlett shook his head in disbelief. And we'll see a free kick to Robertson. So it's... Robertson from the half-back flank. Doing a good job there. <laughs> Fine job. Lovely kick from Robertson towards ten and a half forward. Thumped on by Payton. The chance is Matthews is first on the scene. Matthews will go for the short pass. Lovely if he gets a favourable bounce on run right into the goal square. Bring up his second goal. Hawthorne, 5-7, 37. Richmond, 2-9, 21. Well, as we see Matthews going on screen there, or just off screen, uh, Ablett has come on the ground for Kershaw of Hawthorne. That's the interchange that's just been made. 37 to 21, 16 points the difference, and have we lost another football? I think we may have, I'm not too sure. No, I heard but it is, Jack. Good bit of teamwork there, Bobby, wasn't it? A good tap on from centre-half forward. Matthews picked up the crumb, shot a little pass over the top of the opposition to Loveridge, who was all by himself up in the goal square, and uh, he just ran in for an easy goal. So back to the middle. It has made a difference with Matthews spending a lot more time on the ball, Jack. Oh, the strength of Matthews is a big, a big factor for Hawthorne, Bob. Michael Byrne, Emmett Dunn. Byrne actually got the tap. Wallace picks it up, drives it straight down the ground. Martello in the way, a timely mark. Martello, uh, about 20 metres out from the... Hawthorne goal, playing on, he was given the benefit of a 15 metre penalty, but he got a short pass out to Wiley, Wiley playing straight up the ground O'Halloran over the top, could have been a free kick in the back, would have been paid for mine, and it's a big cloak to take it, he's right on the edge of the uh, square, which puts him out 60 metres from goal nearly, he might be just inside that from where he'll kick he'll take a good kick it's up there, the pack set themselves. It could have been a free kick to Kelvin Moore back in there, but the umpire set a boundary throw-in. So the throw-in will take place five metres around from the behind post. Forward pocket for the Tigers. 13 minutes into the second quarter. Roach and Byrne. Byrne comes out with the ball, almost threw it out. Yes, that's the way the umpire sees it. He didn't have much option. His other hand was being held. Of course, that's permissible when you are in possession. So Roach should be able to kick this goal from here. 
He has kicked one goal so far. And from 20 metres out, dead in front of goal, Robert Heatley stand in. I think Roach should kick his second goal. Richmond have 2-9 so far. That's a goal. Richmond 3-9, 27, Hawthorne 5-7, 37. That's the story at Princess Park. So it's back to 10 points, the margin that Hawthorne hold. 14 minutes into the second term. We saw the value of Pope being strong enough to stand his ground and win that free kick at centre-half forward, Jack. Yeah, well, I thought it was a, a definite free kick. No doubt about that. Hawthorne, 10 points in front. 14 minutes into the second quarter. Michael Byrne. Bounce favours them at Dunn. It's taken by Wiley. Wiley's kick over the half-forward line. Bounces in no-man's land. Coming across is Robertson. Robertson tripped by Bartlett. No free kick, though, and Bartlett's able to win possession of the ball. Look for Roach. It's tucked away from Roach. He missed the first time by Kennedy, then kicked off the ground. Wiley's got him out of the way. Gathers the ball in close out to the line. It goes straight over the boundary line, and a free kick will naturally go to the Hawks. I noticed out there, you can't see it on screen, but it appears that Robertson's holding the back of his knee. It's to be hoped for Hawthorne's sake, of course, that he's all right. Kelvin Moore with the free kick. Up high, Polkinghorne will fly against Cloak. Got the ball down to turf toward Wallace. Can't get it out. It was forced away from him. Strong work being done in there. Of course, there was nearly a throw, too, on that occasion by Strawn. The ball forced out to the half-back flank for Hawthorne on the outer side of the ground. The elusive bounce beat the more Bartlett hanging on to the opposition. Could have been a free kick. The umpire's called play on. The kick from Russell Green towards the centre. Tuck judged the ball beautifully. Couldn't quite hang on to it, though. It's now picked up by Kane. The hand pass over the top. Tumped on by Polkinghorne. It's picked up by Welsh. Welsh from the centre-half forward. But she goes straight down the ground. But in the way. Oh, great play by Bartlett. Robertson was about to take a chess mark and Bartlett thumped the ball away. A wonderful piece of football, Jack. It was a good thing. I didn't think Bartlett could get to it, really. Robertson was about to take the mark on his chest, but Bartlett just got the hand to it in time to force it over the boundary line. So that's, instead of the ball being down the ground, there's a chance for Roach now. It's Bartlett coming into the goal square. Oh, strong football by Kelvin Moore, but the kick goes straight to Brian Wood. He couldn't take it cleanly. Green goes in for Hawthorne. He got pushed down by Wood. Rioli's there. Got around beautifully. Spins out of trouble. Shot it out to Emmett Dunn. Emmett Dunn's kick coming in toward the goal square. They all set themselves. Up they fly. Byrne can't take the mark. It's on the turf. It's been forced through. Whoops, a bit of strong work by Welsh. A free kicks at the umpire to Polkinghorne. Umpire called, as you saw, he said he was tripped. So Polkinghorne taking a real risk. Coming across the ground. Shocking football. Being changed to show that's 33 points. Hawthorne 5 7 37. I'm astounded, Jack. <laughs> and Bobby can't believe what he's just seen. Back to the centre with umpire Bryant. Big Mike Byrne got the hook out, punched on again. Chance for Mew. He lets his teammate Ayres get it. He shot a hand pass out now and through leverage to Wallace. Hawthorne go forward into the forward pocket, a well-placed kick. I don't know whether that's the right place to be, though, Bob, in no, that I pocket. I would have been inclined to have a couple of bounces, Jack, because uh, he had the, the, the chance to take the risk. And uh, from there, he's really made it hard for Gary Ablett to have any chance of a score. He might get a point, but if he can kick a goal from there, it'll be miraculous. Oh, well, it's going to take a long kick. Not bad. That's a miraculous goal, I think. <laughs> Bobby, how was that one? <laughs> Good Great goal. goal. Good Great goal. goal. Credit where it's due, but it was uh, still for mine the wrong place. So I agree with you entirely. <laughs> but Hawthorne, 6 7 43, 10 points in front of Richmond, 4 9 33. Yes, well, they've answered that one quickly, and I think the whole side may have responded in trying to, trying to help Polkinghorne uh, on that one. Nothing can help Polkinghorne from that one. Back to the centre bounce. Mike Byrne is favoured by the bounce. Got the backhander tap toward Goad. Goad allows it to go through the paint and too slow to get rid of it. Welsh picks up the crumb. The small kick comes up toward Cloak. He'll get it onto Rowlings, I think, with a little short kick. That was successful. Picked up by Rowling. Hooked around to Ward Bartlett. He can't get there. Robertson doing a great job over there. 
Robertson 25 metres out from the Richmond goal, now making the distance half the ground to go. Goad's going to make it a lot further. Oh, he went for a hand pass to Burnley, he wasn't awake. Well, he was coming into Shepherd for Polinghorn, now it's a hand pass on. Goss tried to get the tap out. Russell Green tackled too high, but he recovers well. Gets the short kick down towards the pocket. Ablett coming on the scene, can't quite gather for possession. And Martello lets the ball go over the boundary line. No, uh, Michael Byrne not quite realising that it was going to be a hand pass. He did the right thing, though, in coming into Shepherd. That he did, and Alan Goad thought he'd give him the hand pass instead, but he wasn't anywhere near wait to get it. Well, he didn't expect it. Payton hooked it out the back. Chance for Wallace. He was dragged to ground. Ball gets forced out by Waitman up toward the half-back flank for Richmond at Travels, and a good mark has been taken by Michael Byrne. He's showing a little bit of form, isn't he? He's playing very well, Jack. I'm sure at this stage, uh, the Hawthorne... Uh, Grange Trust would be extremely happy about whatever money they spent for Michael Byrne. Well, let's see how good he can kick. He's 50 metres out from goal. I called a chance of a score. Wobble, 15 metre penalty against Emma Dunn. Must be a chance now, Jack. He's got to be a real chance too because he's only about 40 metres out. So that wasn't a very impressive kick, the last shot. No, he went far too close to the men on the mark. That he did, and the ball uh, wobbled off the boot. He should go for a, a drop punt now from that distance. So I don't know whether he prefers to kick a drop punt kick or whether he kicks a torpedo punt, because the other one was a mixture of both. So we'll see what happens here. Drop punt he's used, and he's hooked it. Only one point. Hawthorne 6-8, Richmond 4-9, the time clock coming up to the 20-minute mark. You're watching the second quarter on Sevens Big League. So Alan Martello bring the ball back into play. I think he should go the other side. He's looking toward the member side, but it, I'm sure he realises he has to go the other way. Favours the drop punt. Goes out wide. Well-placed kick and well taken by Brian Wood. Wood, former Richmond skipper, up towards centre wing. The current skipper taps it on, that being David Cloak. Hawthorne's uh, captain puts it down forward, and that being Matthews. Well, strong, strong play there, Jack. But, uh, Terry Wallace, uh, as usual, not one to get out of the way. There's been some strong work in this game. We might see a bit more before it's over, too. Or well, over the back with a big punch came down. It comes to Wood, tackled by Tuck. Got the kick in the nick of time. Did it go over the boundary line on the full? No, the umpire said it will be a boundary throw in. It's on Hawthorne's half-forward flank on the outer side of the ground, some 75 to 80 metres out from their goal. The breeze was, was blowing down the ground, favouring the end to which Hawthorne is kicking, that being the scoreboard end of Prince's Park. Emma Dunn got the tap down to the front of the pack. Taken by Landy of Richmond. He screws the ball over the shoulder. Up high was Mew, couldn't take the mark. Tapped on by Rioli. Fine play, Rioli, and a quick hand pass by Cloak. Picked up by Loveridge. Loveridge, a hand pass over the top. A too high over the top of his teammate down there in Bacanara. Bacanara's kicked back towards centre-half forward. The diving mark missed by Jimmy Jess. No fault with Jimmy Jess. Tackled too high. I thought he had him by the jumper. How can it be too high with the high? I was about to say, he had hold of his jumper, so he can't have tackled him too high. But it was right up by the neck. But Waitman hand passing in now. Kane, the recipient. Short passes on well, making position on centre wing. Didn't take it cleanly, has plenty of time to get balance. The shoot a hand pass over. Rollings takes it back to Welsh. It comes. Welsh about 35 metres out from goal. He's way off target. I think Roach should have been the uh, fellow to take that ball. But only one point resulting. So Hawthorne still hanging on. 44 playing 34. Hawthorne 10 points in front. We've been playing 22 minutes of the second quarter. Kelvin Moore putting it up high. Roach would be favourite here. And the ball, too, I was going to say, too long for Roach. Tuck comes through, a hand pass over the top. He was looking for Goad. Goad tried to get it out to Wallace, couldn't do so. And so Barry Rollings comes on the scene. The kick off the side of the boot, up towards the flank. Cloak reading it well, takes a fine chest mark. 40, David Cloak. 40 to 45 metres, Bobby, into the breeze. Yes, but he has got the protection of the stands from there, Jack, so uh, I think every chance of a goal. David Clay. Clay's kick. Right through the centre. First goal to David Clay. And Richmond now, at the margin, only four points as they go to five goals, ten. 50, uh, 40 points with Richmond, uh, Hawthorne, I should say, sorry. Uh, 6 8 44. Well, there's been nothing in this game. As you can tell by the board, in the first quarter, Hawthorne kicked 3-4. Richmond kicked 2-7. Emmett done up high, got the left-handed tap down. Wiley in there, can't pick it up cleanly. He's still in there burrowing away, can't do a great deal with it. 
and we'll see a, a bounce taking place it in the centre of the ground. The ground, of course, being Prince's Park. The ground shared by Hawthorne and Carlton Football Clubs. Byrne got it out. Bacanara can't take it. Goss got a hand pass out to Mew. The left foot kick from Mew comes out toward the wing position. Goad and Payton tapped out by Payton to Goad. Goad can have a shot toward... Oh! Pass from Rioli, back to Jess. Jess in trouble, looking for a way out. He's found one. On the left foot he goes, to the outer side at wing. There's a chance for Green, giving chase as Waitman. Waitman, two out, uh, one out against two Hawthorne players and doing it well. Well scored by Ayres, should have been holding the ball decision. The umpire called play on. Bacanara couldn't do much with it. Waitman back in business again. Bacanara calling for the free kick, but it's a free kick to Waitman. Dale Waitman, showing a tremendous amount of courage, gets the short lead. And a well-placed kick finds Rioli. His kick dropping short. Well smothered by Cloak, but then picked up by Byrne. Byrne's wild hand pass. Tapped on. Goss is first on the scene. Couldn't handle it cleanly. It's eventually tapped up to Ayres. Ayres was looking to handball. Now Alex to go for the kick. Straight into the arms of Richmond's Graham and from Moven Kane. He's playing on in towards centre half forward. The kick dropping short to Rowlings. Rowlings can play on two. He will now. He can see daylight. The short pass is in. With a chance for Roach. Couldn't handle it. He's out at half forward flank. Trying to hook the ball back. A long way to go. Kelvin Moore sets himself. Or Taylor into the back of Moore. Umpire didn't play it. That's Taylor trying to get up to have a shot toward goal. He's got it out. It's going to be run through by Robertson. Could have been a free kick to Kelvin Moore without much worry, but the umpire didn't play it. One point to Richmond. They moved their score to 6-11. Hawthorne 6-8, so it's three points of difference. And Kennedy takes the kick in from fullback. Hand passes to O'Halloran. O'Halloran chips one over the top. It's a high one. Down toward Goat on centre wing. He can hand pass over too been taken by Bacanara who should give it to Tuck that he's done, Tuck can't get balanced in time, yes he got balanced, got the boot to it it's swinging away from goal, a chance for, oh, could have been a good mark to Ablett the ball runs toward the boundary line, Matthews can't get it and we'll see a boundary throw in yes Gary Ablett made a great attempt to uh, take that mark, but just a little bit too high for him and over the top five metres from the behind post Martello in the front position, wins the tap against Payton, picked up by Hawthorne's uh, Hulking horn, but no player could get clear, and so umpire Glenn James decides that with the scoreboard saying three points in favour of the Hawks, he'll bounce the ball in the forward pocket for them. Only 20 metres out from Hawthorne's goal, the ball about to be put down by umpire James. Martello got up high, as did Peyton. Peyton picks it up, has a hurried shot toward goal, he kicks it right in the middle of a pack of players, and has been forced out now by Wiley, bringing it out to the members' side. A chance for Goad with the ball in front of him, he's looking for a free kick, it's been picked up and shot to one goal. Pointer a goal, hit the post. Good try by Ablett. <laughs> it's a good try. Got the boot to ball very quickly, but hit the post. It's bad luck for Gary Ablett. Martello going for the short kick. He was looking for um, uh, Rollings. Rollings tackled, but breaks away from the tackle by Matthews and then puts the ball off the side of the boot over into the crowd. So we'll find the free kick to be taken out wide, midway between wing and half forward flank for Russell Green. He should bring the ball in towards centre half forward. Peyton's leading in that direction. I don't know whether he's seen him or not. No, he's ignored the lead and now kicks in toward the pocket. Tuck trying to get into position, and he did. He's a fine player, Jack. <laughs> not a 15 bad. metre pen uh, penalty. Foolish play by the Richmond defender there to knock the ball out of Tuck's hands. See Tuck get around that pack. He went around the back of the pack and stuck himself in the middle and popped up between them. It's a, a 15 great metre penalty will give Tuck the opportunity of kicking his second goal. Still not an easy one. He'd make the distance without any worries. So Michael Tuck, 25 metres out. Kick off the boot. Clapped by Polkinghorne. The goal umpire said that Tuck has kicked his second goal to take the Hawks to seven goals nine. 51, Richmond 5-11-41. Well, there's the difference in kicking for goal, Bob. 16 shots each and 10 points the difference. Yes, but 7-9 to 5-11, uh, there's not uh, a great difference in a check. Oh, no, 10 points. I'd rather be 10 in front than 10 behind. Yes, but in conditions like this, even Hawthorne have missed uh, a couple. Big Emmett done, tap beaten by Byrne. Goad comes on the scene again, he's doing well. Goad putting the ball in the forward pocket, too long for Ablett, I think. Oh, couldn't quite get the hands of it. The umpire said the ball is over the boundary line on the full. And we'll see, no, it's been touched over. He's making up ground now to you know, have a boundary throw in. So Hawthorne in attack from their forward pocket position, about from where Tuck kicked that last goal. Pate will be opposing Martello in the ruck. Payton over the back. 
Goss was there, couldn't get the ball clear. He was competing for that ball with Kane, and so a boundary throw, not a boundary, a ball up will take place. We've been playing in excess of 28 minutes. Big pack of players there. It'd be hard for anybody to get clear. The ball, the loose ball comes out towards Reigns. Quick hand pass to Wiley. Good play by Reigns. Wiley's kicked towards centre half forward. I thought that Robinson almost got into the back of Bartlett there, but then he thumped the ball away. Oh, no. Not going to play that shot. Threw himself there. Waitman plays on to Strawn, who got the fumbles. He's been tackled by Tuck, but too late. He got the kick up toward Bartlett, who can't take the mark. Coming out from the pocket is Taylor. His hand pass not good. Uh, Kelvin Moore picks up. Funny little kick gets it down toward Tuck, who's opposed to Strawn. A free kick to Tuck. Tuck on the ground. He got a little bit of uh, a free kick here. He's on the half-back flank position. Should kick it long. He can get right down to half forward. Matthew's telling him to kick it long. He's gone for a short pass. I didn't think that was the right thing to do, but he mightn't be as well as I think. There was some doubt about Tuck playing today, Bob, so he mightn't be as fit as he should be. Has he got one on to go with down there too? Yes, I noticed that. <laughs> the scoreboard at halftime seeing Hawthorne holding a 10 point margin 7-9-51 Richmond 5-11-41 well they've kicked 4-5 to 3-4 and they'll lead by 10 points 29 20 Princess Park. Hawthorne are leading Richmond by 10 points as we go into the third quarter. A very important quarter of football this in any game and today is no exception. Jack, I do believe that breeze is fresh and if, it was, if it's possible. Well, it was blowing pretty strongly still. Well, Chris Mew got the ball working up toward Payton. He couldn't do with, uh, much with it. It's been picked up and booted right downfield by Landy. Landy puts it right down within 20 metres of goal. Wiley taps it out. Barton's first goal. No, he's caught. And the umpire calls play on. Didn't penalise him. A hand pass comes back to O'Halloran. It wasn't a very good hand pass from you. But O'Halloran gets it working to the attacking side of the ground. Kane the chance to take the mark. And that he does. He's looking for the chance to play on. Got a hand pass out. It's given to Reigns. Reigns straight off the tackle. And will put the ball deep into attack. In fact, he could score. Tried right up to the goal square. And a mark should be paid. The umpire said not. The ball hit the post. One point only. I'll look at that long jack. I owned it. I thought it could have been paid, Bob. It was a good attempt to mark, but the umpire said no. So one point to Richmond, and they move on to 42 points, nine points behind Hawthorne's total of 51. Nice kick there from fullback. Short kick from Kennedy. Hawthorne dived in over the top there of his opponent, and in that case it was Rioli, but no free kick was forthcoming, so the umpire, and that is Tony Bryant, coming across to decide to bounce the ball on the half-forward line for the Tigers. Burn wins the tap. Bad bounce for Rioli. It comes back now to Reigns. Reigns a quick hand pass across to Rollings. Rollings puts the ball forward. Robertson. Yes. Good mark. Fine game he's played against Kevin Bartlett. Oh, he's really got himself in a bit of trouble here. Yes, he's in strike. He's got a long hand pass. Get out of trouble. It's been given over to Lee Matthews, who puts it up towards centre wing, looking for Tuck. Can't take the mark. Been picked up out there on the outer side. Looked like Malthouse got the hand pass down. Eventually Welch, after taking the hand pass, he should kick a goal, Bob. Clean kicking distance. He's kicked two to date. So the opportunity of making it to three and the margin between the two sides, three points. Well, that's if he kicks the goal, of course. Hawthorne 7 9 51, Richmond 5 12 42. Only nine points the difference. And as Bobby Skilton said, can he make it only three points the difference? Now the ball isn't on target. Oh, it's a mark. 
It's a mark and could be play on. Oh, he's running around, Taylor. I thought he might. Yes, he's been called to play on now. Had a hurried shot toward goal, which is off target and may get through for one behind only. The umpire quick to see that Taylor was running around on the mark, called play on very quickly. He always had the intention of, or he looked to me as though he wanted to play on. <laughs> yes, well, it was in a very acute angle. He was very close to the behind post when he actually took the mark. So Kelvin Moore going to the outer, the defensive side of the ground. Looked like a great attempt to mark it. Uh, then Rowling snapped the ball up, puts it forward. Once again, Roach has a chance. This time he's about five metres closer to goal than his previous kick. Well, he should have learned a little bit from the last attempt to goal. He kicked, uh, allowed too much for the breeze. The breeze is blowing very strongly across the kick, more than behind the kick. He'll have to aim for his left-hand goal post, or somewhere about that vicinity, but it's a very strong breeze blowing. Roach. You can tell that Richmond have kicked 5-13, and that will make it 6 goals, 13. Richmond Roach popped that one through, his third goal, Hawthorne 7-9-51. Yes, a nice kick from uh, Michael Roach. The type of kick that you need under these conditions, Jack. Not a lot of height in it, and uh, doesn't get you know much of a chance for the breeze to really take control. A well-placed kick, and Roach with three goals. Taylor with one, one goal, three, uh, Taylor, and two-pronged attack. Umpire Glenn James about to put the ball down again. Good bounce. Byrne hooked it out toward Polkinghorne, can't get rid of it yet. He's still trying to get it out. He's got another chance to go in again. Been picked up by Welsh, a hand pass comes out. A chance for Waitman, but tucks there, tapped it straight to the arms of Wood. Wood picks up for Richmond, putting it down toward goal. It's going to be very close, and it could be a mark to Taylor. No, from his hands, it was thumped through 4-1 behind. So scores tightening right up here. It's Richmond now on 50 points, Hawthorne on 51, only one point the difference. At quarter time, Hawthorne led by three points, at half time by ten points. Richmond's game really appears to have lifted at this moment because uh, they have uh, all the attacking so far, but it was by far a free kick then to Michael Byrne. Uh, big, tall Hawthorne Ruckman. Byrne keeping the ball out wide on the outer side. Peyton making no attempt to take the mark. Gets it on, picked up by Reigns, a hand pass towards Welsh. Welsh showed pace, so to Loveridge. The kick goes forward and Chris Mew takes a fine mark. He'll, he'll play, play on. on from there. Has one bounce. Now he'll go for the long kick straight down the ground. Looking up there for Ablett. Ablett used his body, could easily have been penalised. Screws it around and he gets a favourable bounce. He does not. Only one point. Well, he didn't have anyone there to give it to up in the goal square. So he had to have the shot toward goal. You may have thought it was selfish play, but he did the only thing he could do. Mickey Malthouse. We'll go to the outer side looking for Emmett Dunn. Well placed kick, Byrne to the back of Dunn. Ball too far for both of them. Byrne got a hand pass out. That was good football to Wallace. He gets it up toward Tuck, but the man out in front. And it's uh, Kane who's taken the mark in front. No, it's not, it's Landy. He's taken the mark in front of uh, Tuck. 15 metre penalty will bring him right down to the half back line. He doesn't wait for that. He gets the ball moving quickly to Cloak. Cloak nudged out by Ayers. The ball comes through to Green. Green gets a hand pass working. I think uh, would have been uh, preferred to have kicked that one. It's been kicked by Loveridge up to Matthews into the back of Kane. Matthews a chance to get a short pass working. The kick he hooks around. Hopeful for Peyton. Peyton up high and the mark taken by that player. Yes, he's uh, done a solid job at centre half forward against uh, the big fellow in Jess. Uh, he obviously not that he's played so brilliantly, but he made has made no attempt to mark on a number of occasions, hooking the ball on and allowing the smaller men to come in. But he's certainly not allowed Jess to become dominant. Peyton shot toward goal is. Is it through? I think it might be. No, only one point. Went very close to the right-hand goalpost. May have even gone over the top of it or just through for one behind. Only one point. Hawthorne 7-11. Richmond 6-14. Hawthorne lead by three points. And the ball delivered out toward Polkinghorne in front of the pack. Plays on quickly to Wallace with a hand pass, which wasn't a good one. Wallace could have got a free kick out of that. He got out of trouble, all right. Picks himself up and delivers the ball up toward Goss. It's at the back for Peyton. Peyton can't get there before it runs over. No, Jess keeps it in play, I think. Got a hand pass out. A chance for Matthews. Looking for the free kick. Did he get it? Now the umpire's called play on again. Goss looked for a free kick and the umpire said, I think I'll bounce it. <laughs> Hawthorne fans not very happy out there in front of the Carlton Social Stand. 
Well, there could have been a couple of free kicks, but umpire Tony Bryant was right there, having a good look at proceedings and decided to bounce. Ball comes to Matthews, kicks it straight into Jimmy Jess, who handled that well. Wiley picks the ball up close at the boundary line, hooks it up towards centre wing. Chris Mew leads as he comes out from the half-back line. A hand pass over the top to Russell Green. Green quick to get ball to boot because the big fellow Cloak was coming on the scene. Up high was Michael Byrne, but Peyton in the front position takes a fine mark. He's got the opportunity of making amends. Byrne doesn't look too good there, Jack. No, it looks like he may have hurt his ankle. Bobby on landing, we'll wait and see. Just making some adjustment there, but Peyton with the shot to goal. That looks close. Oh, no, once again, he's just slid past that post. Jack, I think he's allowed for the wind on both occasions, and it just hasn't moved the ball at all. Well, the ball went through exactly the same position. So, uh, another point. So, Hawthorne with a chance to score goals, but not getting them. 7-12, Richmond 6-14. Oh, Good kick. kick. Big, big Al Martello sends one right down to the wing on the outer side. Kennedy couldn't take the mark. It didn't bounce kindly for him. He picked it up well on the third attempt. Got a small kick away in direction of the wing position. Found Polkling Horn. Hasn't done a bad job at times. Polkling Horn's hand pass a good one. Go trying to break through. Gets it back towards Polkling Horn. Not good play by Gale on that occasion. We only good play that to get it away. Puts the ball forward into the arms of Dunn. Hawthorne with a golden opportunity there and just going wasted. Emma Dunn will be looking for Cloak or will he go down toward Roach? The kick's very high. Bartlett should do the roving that he set himself to do. Roach. Uh, cloak in position, kicked out by Ayres and straight to the opposition in Peter Welsh from the point of the square, he lets a hand pass go to Bartlett, Bartlett on the left foot swings the ball back toward goal, he's way off target as you can see, uh, the players compete for the ball in between the goal and point post and only one point resulting for Richmond Hawthorne 7-12-54 Richmond 6-15-51 only three points the difference and it's a swirling breeze now to which Kelvin Moore will have to kick kicks out to the outer side Lovely kick from Kelvin Moore. Thumped away by Emma Dunn. Picked up by Rioli, who runs straight into a wall of players. Had no opportunity whatsoever. Norm Goss comes out with the ball. His kick smothered off the boot. Taken by Polkinghorne, very close to the boundary line. The hand pass across to Kennedy. Kennedy's kick up over the half door, towards half forward. And Burn Payton comes across. Tackle when not in possession with call play on. And so Tuck swoops on the ball, brings it back. Lee Matthews, oh, great mark. It's a familiar mark anyway. But the courage plus by Lee Matthews, but we always know that Matthews, without doubt, there, uh, full of courage, and that was no uh, exception running straight at Jimmy Jess. Kicked by Matthews up high toward the scoring zone. Bacanara will come over the top, got the hands, we couldn't hold it, but the umpire had given a uh, free kick to Richmond in the meantime. And it looks like a mark has been paid as a bob. I thought it was a free kick because Bacanara had the hands of the rollings all by himself as a paddock in which to run. He can come right down the well. He's got the slips. He's missed it. He balks. Oh, good tackle. He got out of it well, though. And Rowling still in possession. Polkinghorne trying to close if the Polkinghorne gap. Polkinghorne had ran earlier, he would have been there to give his teammate a bit of opportunity on that occasion. Bartlett swoops on the ball. One way, then the other. Now it comes on to the left foot. A good-looking kick, but it won't be a score. Taylor! Holding, holding Bob. He didn't play the mark. The umpire said he was being held. That's Roach. And that's uh, Roach. And that's the uh, the reason a lot of people thought he'd been paid the mark, but he had not. So Roach will have a difficult shot toward goal. Has kicked three. Three goals, that is, out of Richmond's total of six goals, 15. So Roach with a very difficult angle. He's got back far enough to run around to open up the gap. We'll see if he just does that. Looks like he's going to set himself and take the deliberate shot. Oh, good goal. Good goal, kicked by Roach. Hawthorne, 7-12-54. Richmond, 7-15-57. Richmond in front by three points. I think um, Roach Jack might like this ground. Wasn't it uh, just two or three years ago that he kicked ten there goals or thereabouts? I think it was too, Bobby, at this ground. Princess Park, of course, is the venue. Seven's big league is what you're watching. On the back. Michael Byrne, not a clear tap, but picked up by Wallace. Wallace puts the ball forward, Straw and Bacanara, Bacanara in the front position. And the man at the back's been played. So Straw getting the uh, doubtful decision there. Straw putting it down to Cloak, tried to punch it forward, a chance for Goad, he runs into trouble, got a hand pass to Polkinghorne, Rioli's quick, he hurriedly picked him up. Hand pass, not a good one, but a courage shown there. Matthew spun out of the pack, 
Gets the ball moving toward the goal square. Ablett's there, Payton's there. Chance for Ablett. Oh, he's lost it. He had a golden opportunity to go toward goal, but Martello picks up and clears down toward Reigns. Back behind play. Wallace is in a bit of trouble. It's Reigns now. Puts the ball towards half forward. A well placed kick taken out there by Welsh. Balks beautifully. Then the left foot kick in towards centre half forward. O'Halloran in position takes a fine mark. Thought about playing on to Robertson, but now steadies and goes back to take his kick. Terry Wallace has got away from the train. He's limping downfield, but I think we might see a replacement in a moment. He doesn't look that, that fit. The ball now out, bouncing freely out toward range. Or did that well to get into position to pick it up. Couldn't quite handle it. And the umpire said the ball has been forced over the boundary line. We'll see a throw in on the half forward flank for Richmond on the outer side of the ground. Richmond leading Hawthorne by three points and the time clock showing 13 minutes have gone in the third quarter. Burn up high, almost gave away a free kick. Welsh screws the ball over the shoulder. Back to Bartlett who misses a sitter. Not the best of days for Kevin Bartlett now. The opportunity gets a favourable bounce. Robertson takes the ball away from Bartlett. Across the base, Waitman comes in. Robertson tackles him well. Gets it to Wiley. Wiley straight up. He's hooked it and only one point. Well, both teams are missing goals, which I would say in the normal conditions, well, they normally get that one only 15 metres out and while they couldn't keep it straight enough. So 7-16 to 7-12. Richmond in front, Kelvin Moore going to the outer side. Byrne in front of the pack, the ball tapped toward Polvey Horn, he punches it out. Another chance for Mew, Cloak's there, now Waitman's on the scene. He gets pushed in the back by Ayers, the umpire calls play on. Waitman over the top of the ball, the umpire set a bounce. The bounce will be at centre-half forward for the Tigers. A four-point lead they're holding at the moment. Cloak takes the ball, smothered off the boot. Goss forced it forward, picked up by Welsh. A quick hand pass to Rioli. Rioli puts it on the boot. It goes out towards the forward pocket. Just over, no, bounce just before the boundary line. Well, that was very close. I thought it was over. Well, Richmond in attack from the boundary throw-in. The ball will land only 25 metres away from goal. Roach will do the ruck work against Byrne. Roach got the tap out toward Bartlett. Can't he control it? Yes, he's got it. Left foot shot toward goal. No score for mine. Out of bounds on the full. So the snap shots that they often get, Bob, they're not getting today. Yes, they're not easy today, though, Jack. No, they're not easy. The breeze is very strong. But Richmond, 7-16. Hawthorne, no, Hawthorne 7-12. That's only four points the difference. Taylor being brought back. So it's Kelvin Moore. From alongside the behind post. A wobbly looking kick. Hard one to mark. Emma Dunn almost did. New puts the ball forward. Up towards centre wing. Jess coming through. Straight into a tackle. Lost possession. Dumped by James was uh, on the blind side once again and couldn't see that. A short kick comes in towards Waitman. Missed a mark. Went into a hip and shoulder. A loose ball taken by Ayers. Gets it up towards Kennedy. Kennedy now looking for the short pass. He was looking out there towards Ludwig. Lovely, he'll get support from Goad. No, Goad didn't go in to give him the support, waiting for the ball to come out. And eventually, it's Malthouse who gets the ball out to Welsh. Welsh gives a hand pass over the top to Rioli. Rioli back towards centre half forward. Byrne didn't get a good bounce, but trapped it well. Got the hand pass to Mew. Mew's kicking towards centre half forward. Emma Dunn punches the ball away. Comes out to Bacanara. The quick hand pass to Green. He couldn't handle it cleanly. Wood comes through, couldn't do this likewise. <laughs> he did do likewise. <laughs> well, this is rough and tough football here, but it's all, all mistakes. Wiley got a hand pass from Dunn. Dunn, uh, Wiley looking in toward the full forward position. It goes over the head of, oh, I thought over the head of O'Halloran. He hand passes now to Matthews. Matthews hand passes out to Polky Hall. Not a good one. Back to Matthews if it come. Matthews can see Kennedy leading to the outer side, opposed to Rowlings. Rowlings should have more pace than Kennedy, but Kennedy showing a turn of speed there. Good work, John Kennedy, putting the ball in toward the forward pocket. Look at Bacanara. He's a chance for a goal. Bacanara's there. Oh, it pushed in the back. The umpire calls play on. <laughs> well, I don't know about that one. Oh. I don't know whether he fell over or not, but I thought it was in the back. <laughs> Only one point to Hawthorne. Three points the difference in Richmond's favour. Either way, it's a great game we're watching in blustery conditions and uh, great because of the fact that you know, neither side is prepared to give way at all. It's conditions that are making a, a number of mistakes that we are seeing as Ayers comes across. Puts the ball forward with a long kick. Out there is Kennedy. Chance to mark. Can't do so. Great effort nonetheless. And we find Strawn giving them a hand pass up towards Reigns. Reigns now from the half-back flank. A poor kick. Finds Rioli, the bad bounce for Rioli, and Pockinghorn comes on the scene. 
has the ball taken away, pulled foul by the umpire, Rioli, towards centre half forward, is a nice mark. Isn't that a bad job? And he's played well, Jack. Gary is doing quite well for Hawthorne in the back pocket, a hand pass to Chris Mew, who took a bounce we didn't have to, he's his second one in the space of 10 metres, three now, four, he's running away from Taylor, five, we'll get himself in bother in a minute, a hand pass comes up, not a good one, a high one to Wallace, he gets it out to Green, Green can get the ball moving up toward the full forward zone, he, boy, he lost possession to Jess, and the umpire said he was taking too hard. So did I, but uh, well, the crowd are certainly getting their money's worth today. If they like to come and hoot and umpire, they're certainly having a lot of fun. The kick by Green up to Tuck, can't take the mark. At the back, there is a chance for Martello, too strong for Goss on that occasion. Emma Dunn forced the ball out of bounds, and the umpire said it will be a throw-in. Well, a lot of mistakes we're seeing, but it's still entertaining football. 18 minutes have gone in the third quarter. You're watching on Sevens Big League. The game at Princess Park between Hawthorne and Richmond. Byrne got a big tap out of the pack. A chance for Landy there, but it's now it's Matthews picking the ball up on the boundary line. They've all got the shuffles. They can't do a great deal with it, and we'll see another boundary throw in. Yes, from the point of view of uh, straight skill, not a lot in this game, but by gee, it's a wonderful game to watch. Payton gets the ball down. Goss the chance, and he goes towards goal. Now it's picked up by Ablett almost. And pack of players there. This is a pressure game, Jack. Well, the the best way you could describe it, isn't it? Well, that's right. In that case, they're Ablett and Goss for fighting for possession. And of course, they're teammates. So the ball being bounced 20 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. Byrne will get up high, hooked it out to the side of the pack, straight to Rollings. It's over the head of Wood and over the head of Go. Jess coming on the scene, took it cleanly, and get the ball into the centre. Cloak's unopposed in there. He'll hand pass. No, he'll get the boot into it now. He's going to drive from the centre of the ground, right into the forward pocket. He's out very wide, looking for Taylor, giving chase as Robertson, but the ball has beaten everybody over the boundary line, and we'll see a boundary throw in. I don't think Cloak should have gone out there. Surprising to see him go out there, Jack. Right out in the dead pocket. In that pocket now, we see the two number eights, Roach of Richmond, O'Halloran of Hawthorne. Roach actually got the tap, but uh, comes away to Robinson. Nice hand pass from Robinson to Polkinghorne. Bollinghorn puts it up towards centre wing, thumped away there, and following it on is Landy. He actually did mark the ball because it was he who punched it forward. Danger. Well placed kick to Rioli, and as Jack Edwards said, danger as Rioli puts a lovely kick forward, hit the post. Well, I can see Rioli pouncing on that boy, had plenty of time to swing around to his kicking foot, the left foot, and uh, from about 50 metres out with the breeze behind him, it was dangerous, all right, for Hawthorne, but bad luck for him. He hit the post, so we've seen a few of those. Richmond 7, 17, 59. Hawthorne 7, 13, 55. There's been three posters, our statistician Mike Ringham tells us. And Kelvin Moore going out wide to the outer side. No mark taken. Cloak then taps the ball on it, goes straight to Russell Green. Green's kick up towards centre wing. Emma Dunn tapped it down. Good tackle. tackle against the Rollings. The loose ball comes out now. And uh, Tuck takes the ball away from Emmett Dunn. Tuck, a wonderful player for the Haw Hawks, puts it up towards Matthews. Oh. A bad bounce for Matthews. He's well backed up by Tuck, who followed on down the ground. And eventually the ball comes up. To Ablett, a great mark to Ablett. What a great mark it was. Richmond player down behind play. Not on screen at the moment. But Ablett, who kicked the miraculous goal in that uh, previous quarter. In the second quarter, beautiful goal sort of across the breeze. But this time, he'll be kicking into the breeze. Just about into the teeth of it, too, where he's sitting. Seen a couple miss from here, but he's about 40 metres out, no more. He normally a penetrating kick. The umpire runs backwards. I think he's missed this one. Yes, that's about the result we've seen on the three kicks. The fellow on the other side of the ground, Bob, uh, for Richmond, who is in the hands of the trainers, I'll try and pick up for you. Looks like Landy. But right now it's Malthouse who puts the ball... Out, maybe he's gone over the line. Now a 15-metre penalty has been paid against uh, Norm Goss for being too close to the kickoff. The player in question was Landy, but he's up all right now. He's recovered. So a 30-metre penalty now. Not quite see what the second one was for. But Malthouse now from centre half back goes straight down the ground. Cloak up high. Ayres comes through. Got a hand pass in. Trapped by Mew. Mew's hand pass now towards Polkinghorne. Polkinghorne puts it out towards centre wing. Kennedy leads in the race for the ball. Oh, well a, a nice turn. And then across to Green with a hand pass. Russell Green's kick. Punched away by Tuck. Kennedy comes on the scene again. Falls at the vital moment. Got the hand pass into Loveridge. Loveridge over the top towards Green. Green's short kick up to the forward area. No mark taken. Oh, Goss was taken away from that piece of play. And then uh, did exactly what his opponent did to him and was penalised. 
There were some funny decisions here. Malthouse looking for a shot. Now he's going longer down toward Jess. Over the top will come Mew, but Jess takes the mark. Yes, has been paid. He's right on centre wing, which is still in centre of the ground. Normally a great kick should get the ball moving right down the field quickly. Jess, I think it's centre half forward at the moment, Jack. He's put the ball down well, and a good mark by Kelvin Moore. 15 metre penalty must be paid, but I'm sure they don't care. 30 metre should be paid. Well, Kelvin Moore is deciding whether he'll go out wide to the outer side or continue straight up the ground. Not a good kick for Moore, most unlike him, and uh, straight into the arms of Rollins, who plays on quickly. No one doing the tackling. The kick by Rollins, not good. Nearly found Bartlett. Taken away by Robbins. He's played a great game. Hand pass out to Polking Horn. On to Matthews. Matthews out wide, looking out very wide for Buccanara, who takes the mark and pushed down 15-metre penalty. That's giving away a 15-metre penalty at the right time because Buccanara was going to shoot a hand pass on the green, I feel sure. I agree. So that was... Uh, calculated risk he took there and gave away the 15 metre penalty and I think he'll get the plaudits of his coach for that. So Bacanara puts a nice kick into the face of the breeze. Martello in the front position, Tuck was up high, couldn't take the mark. Coming out with the ball is Landy. Landy's long kick. Rioli in the front position, got one too high and he'll take the free kick. Plays on, puts the kick down, wanting a, a two out duel between Moore and Taylor. Almost got it. Roach coats the ball right in the square, and hooks it straight through the points. Well, another one missed. Hawthorne, 7 14 56, and Richmond, 7 18 60. So, uh, well, in this term, Jack, Hawthorne have added five straight behinds. Richmond have kicked two goals, seven. <laughs> well, we must, uh, of course, tell you there's a very blustery breeze blowing out there, and that's the reason. But some of the snapshots they get on normal days, but not today. Kelvin Moore to the outer side again. He'll be looking for a high flyer in his team. Pack set themselves, no marks taken, it's on the ground. A big pack, you see, hit the ball, and we'll see another bounce taking place on the outer side. We've been playing 24 minutes into the third quarter, which you're watching, and uh, the scores are very tight. Only four points separate these two teams, and, of course, Hawthorne will have the advantage of the breeze in the final term, although it doesn't really seem to have made that much difference at the game. The loose ball picked up by Welsh. Up to Sarah, now on the ground for the first time. Sarah's kick high up towards the pocket. Punched away by Robinson, picked up by Bartlett. Bartlett's kick across towards the goal. Kelvin Moore, a lovely mark. What a cool mark that was. Can't get under much more pressure than that was. He had Taylor one side of him and Roach the other, and he just went up in the middle and took a clean mark. To the outer side, he travels once again. The ball will be marked by Rollins. He can swing it back in towards centre half forward if he wishes. He puts it in fairly deep. Into the forward pocket, Taylor up high. Kelvin Moore spoiled the pack. The umpire called for the correct decision. And now it's Moore in trouble. Hand pass comes out. Hawthorne up. up. Mew's in trouble too. He got out of trouble all right. Gets a hand pass back up to Loveridge. And Loveridge can take his time now. Oh, it took too much time. And uh, has lost possession. Reigns through the ball away. Sarah has a shot towards goal, which is smothered. A chance now for Roach back to Sarah. He's caught, but he got a shot toward goal, which hit the post. Well, I don't know. I've seen some mistakes made. We've just seen a few in, the, in this third quarter. It's not the best football you'll ever see, but it's entertaining. There's five points of difference in Richmond's favour. Well, Richard Loveridge, I'm sure, would learn from that, Jack. He would he ever. Calvin Moore. It's a high kick. Burn in the front position. Could almost have got a free kick. He's back towards Cloak, who thumped it forward to Rioli. Rioli fell away when he didn't have possession of the ball. And quite a few mistakes out there at the moment. Welsh gives the hand pass across. Thump forward there by Rollins. It could come off as it picked up by Sarah. Sarah's kicked towards goal. One point again. Seven goals, 20 is the Richmond score. Hawthorne, seven goals, 14, 56. That's 62. It's one goal the difference. And all made up in the behind section there. Uh, I'll rephrase that. 7 14 to 7 20. Six points the difference made up in the minor scores. So, Kelvin Moore to the outer side. No mark from the kick in. Tap down once again, picked up by Tuck. The kick's gone straight up in the air. Welsh flew in there, couldn't take the mark. It's been thumped out towards Sarah. He's doing quite well in the last few moments. Only been on a couple of minutes. Gets the ball working up to Kane, and Kane can take the shot from the forward pocket on the outer side. It's going to be a difficult shot, but we did see a good goal kicked uh, by Ablett from there in the second quarter. It's the one Bobby spoke of before. Mervyn Kane. Will he make it 7-21 or will he make it 8 goals 20 for Richmond? It's a good looking kick. The umpire running down to see 
only one behind again. So 7.21 to 7.14. Richmond lead by seven points at the 27-minute mark of the third quarter. Once again, Kelvin Moore. <laughs> He's had at least 20 kicks today. By that I mean that although they picked 21 points, he hasn't uh, always kicked out. Or he might have, it's hard to say. But at least 20 kicks from fullback. Byrne thumps it on. On again by Bacanara. Taken by Kennedy. Kennedy was tackled but got the hand pass in. Bacanara tapped it on again. Picked up by Rollings. His kick straight down towards the half forward line. A bad bounce for Polkinghorne. Hand pass over from Byrne back to Polkinghorne. Thumps it on and goes over the boundary line. Midway between half forward flank. Centre wing out of sight of the ground. 27 and a half minutes have gone in the third term. Seven points the margin between the sides as we see Kennedy try to get it. Got one too high. And one could say did get a check. Well, a bit unlucky there, Hawthorne, because uh, Tucker kicked the ball off the ground and gone straight to one of his teammates up around the centre wing position, but the umpire had blown the whistle, so the ball has to go back where he had awarded the free kick. So Kennedy, nearly on the half-back line, a little bit up towards centre wing. We're looking for someone up around the half-forward flank. Might be Peyton the target, we'll see. Peyton will get himself positioned in front of Emmett Dunn. Got the hands of it, couldn't take it on the second grab. Being tapped out to the side, Bacanara on the scene, being shepherded by Tuck. The kick from Bacanara, not, not a long one, but he's found a teammate in Wallace. He'll be looking for someone up in the forward zone. He's kicking long into position. Peyton's there, spoiled by Wood, the ball to turf. A chance now, the ball picked up by Green, shot toward goal, and will it be a point or a goal? Another point. The goal umpires are working hard. Yes. But there's only one way they've got one flag they've got to wave most of the time, Jack. <laughs> Six points between the sides. 29 minutes about to come up. Off the side of the boot from Martello. Kennedy couldn't take the mark. Still in there, but uh, taken away by Welsh. Welsh has time to have the bounce and give the long hand pass towards Jeff Rains. Rains gets a favourable bounce from Cedar Wing. Hooks the ball, tries to hook the ball back. Robertson at the back of Bartlett. He's played a wonderful game against Kevin Bartlett. He's done very well indeed. Robertson going for the short pass. He has two teammates. He's elected to find Matthews, and Matthews has been told to play on. Of course, it'll stop the game there. Shocking kick by Matthews along the ground to Ward Tuck. Chipping in as Welsh, and the umpire said... Carlton, Princess Park, Hawthorne 715 57, Richmond 721 63. What's going on over there? He obviously just heard the siren. He, had, he didn't know the siren had sounded. <laughs> what a, what a shocking quarter of football. Jeez. Right. 2 10 they kick. Hmm? Okay. Final quarter from Princess Park, and we start the quarter with umpire Bryant and Richmond 721-63, leading Hawthorne 715-57. The breeze does favour Hawthorne. Jimmy Jess picking up, putting Richmond into attack quickly, up toward Bartlett, can't take the mark. He's quick to get back, or oh, could have been a free kick Hawthorne's way. The umpire's called play on. Here's pulled as he kicked the ball. It comes out towards Polkinghorne. Handball's over the top to Green. Green now goes for the short pass. Misses Bacanara, but it was also missed by Strawn, so Bacanara does come on the scene. A push in the back. Has the ball kicked out of his hands. And umpire Glenn Jones now decides that he'll come in and break it up by bouncing the ball. This time it'll be on the half-forward flank for Hawthorne. Some of these free kicks are hard to get today. The umpires are letting the game flow. Ball put down. Bobby well, we told you, half-forward for Hawthorne. Out towards Buccanara. Tuck tried to trap it. Hooked it out. Hooked out by Byrne. Picked up and kicked by Reigns. Back to the half-forward zone. Bit of strength being shown by Kennedy. Jimmy Jess running onto the scene now. Can't keep it in play. And the umpire set out a bounce for the result. The boundary throw-in taking place on the half-forward flank for Richmond. Hawthorne led by 10 points at half-time, and in the third quarter, Hawthorne kicked six points straight, and Richmond kicked two goals, ten, so the breeze is certainly having its effect on kicking for goal. Jimmy Jess coming through, falls, tries to get the tap out to Wiley, does so, puts the ball forward, 
And a lovely mark there in the front position by Ayers. He's done a fine job, done a fine job, Jack, in the back pocket. Done a very good job indeed, Bobby. He's been very strong. I don't like that bit, but he got a hand pass to O'Halloran. He gets the ball moving with a funny-looking kick down over the head of Peyton, straight to Lee Matthews, who dropped an easy mark. Possibly the sun was in his eyes. A pack forming up, and umpire Jones will clear the pack with a bounce. Well, whether he clears it, another thing, but he's going to have a bounce. A big pack forming around the ball now. Must be about <laughs> close to 20 players. Peyton comes across, got the tap, and goes straight to Reigns, who taps it over the head. Tuck comes on the scene, gets a hand pass across to Green. Green looks down towards the forward pocket, he's put it right across the ground. Gary Ablett leads in the race for the ball. Can he get there before the boundary line? No. And so we'll find the boundary, uh, the boundary umpire to take possession. Put it back into play, midway between forward pocket and half forward flank. 57 to 63, no score since three quarter time. Peyton and Dunn. Dunn gets the tap. Malthouse and Goad. Goad got the hand pass back. And intercepting that Richmond hand pass is Michael Tuck. Tuck a well placed kick as usual, puts it back. Matthews up the throw right over the top. Didn't take the mark and so gave away a free kick. A good play down there. He faced it as Kane, not waiting for the free kick. Put it back. A bad bounce for Welsh. He's able to recover. Give the hand pass across to, to with his teammate there in Mervyn Kane. Kane's kick goes forward. Straight into the arms of the opposition. And this time it's David O'Halloran. O'Halloran should go down the member's side flank or straight into centre half forward. Centre half forward is the target. There's no one home. A tuck coming on the scene a bit late. Didn't take the mark. It's been poor play on and rightly so. Could have been a free kick out there. And the umpire said it will be played to Mervyn Kane. He's going for the hand pass, chopped off by Bacanara. Oh, umpire said 15 metres. Well, I don't know. Bobby didn't agree either. I think he said that Goss came from behind, uh, Jack, but he uh, was a t did intend to play on, did play on, and uh, he should be penalised. It's a wobbly old kick from Kane. Straight into the arms of Buck. So it's Buck. The short kick, Kennedy in the way. A nice mark by Kennedy, a quick hand pass to Kelvin Moore. He's under pressure, but gets out of it. Another <laughs> kick that's, that's, well, it's got to be the effect of the wind, Jack, that's causing the balls to go like they are. Oh, yes, Bob, it does. The, uh, the breeze is certainly playing tricks. Should be a hand pass back out to Robertson, being a great player. He gets a hand pass into Green. Green could straighten up, have a shot for goal. He could level the scores here, but the kick's way off target. There's no excuse for that. It couldn't blame the breeze for that one because the breeze was right behind him. Just a poor kick to goal. Landy looks in a bit of trouble down in front of us, not on screen at the moment, but he's being replaced by Egan. Egan coming on for the first time in the, in the game. There's a chance of a score, it's a goal, kick by Pigsburn, wasn't no, it? Was Gary Ablett. Gary Ablett, as he fell, couldn't quite see just who it was, saw the blonde head and uh, a goal. So scores level here at Prince's Park, 8.15 to 7.21. That's a great goal by Ablett, Jack. Gary Ablett, uh, yeah. I'll say it uh, acrobatic, not customary position of going for the uh, knockout in the ruck. Well, we've got a game here. Scores level. Burn and Cloak. Burn got the tap down. Comes towards Peyton. Puts the ball out towards the sort of half forward flank. And Brian Wood in the way for the Tigers. Plays on straight away. Nobody on the mark. Bad play by Alan Go there. The kick dropping short. And Chris Mew. Mew in the way. He's a true centre-half back position, being told by years ago out in short to Polky Horn, who's made good position in the centre. He thought of playing on and just about did. He is now playing on. Matthews is calling for the ball. It's very high. It's up very high over the head of Matthews. Kane can't take the mark. It's on the turf. Hurriedly got out by Martello. Chance for Reigns, looking for the boundary line. And the ball is in that position now. The boundary throw will take place about 40 metres out from the Hawthorne goal. Hawthorne 63, playing Richmond 63. The time clock, five and a half minutes into the final quarter. The loose ball picked up by Rollins. He's kicking towards the centre. Mew coming across for the Hawks. He'll give the hand pass over the top to Goad. From directly in front, a chance for Alan Goad. He puts the ball forward. But only one point. But nonetheless, it's put Hawthorne in front by one point. 8.16 to 7.21. Yes, the kicking for goal has been atrocious, but we can blame the conditions mainly for that. Not all of it. Alan Martello kicking in fairly long. Byrne trying to get into the front. Oh, good mark. Judge that one well. Yes. Jack. He looked to be completely out of position. He's done well today. He has done well. There have been a lot of good players in the game. Uh, big Michael Byrne. He'd be out 65 metres from goal. The kick won't make it. It's dropped from 40 short. Polking Horn in the position to take the mark. Well spoiled by Rollins. Been picked up by Martello. Kicked in the open paddock, really. 
first to it can have it. Green gets there first, his hand pass comes to Kennedy. He got himself in the spot of bother. It's a chance for go, no back on our end there. Pumping Horn a chance, other hand passes on. Chance for Goss, he's wrong footed. Gives it to Matthews, he's caught. Gets a shot toward goal, and what's he done? It's a goal! Two goals to Lee Matthews. 60 goals. 9-16, 70. So a 70, a seven point margin in favour of Hawthorne at this very moment. Well, it was a good goal, Bobby. It took them a long time to get it to someone who could have a shot to goal, though, didn't it? Because they had a... I thought they were going to mess it up between the little hand passes and all that sort of thing going on. The pairs have lost the second ball for the day. But we see now at Prince's Park, as Bobby told you, Hawthorne leading Richmond, who would be favourites for today uh, to take this game out. They are Hawthorne seven points in front of Richmond. Hawthorne have had 24, 25 scoring shots to Richmond's 28, and yet Hawthorne lead by seven points. Michael Byrne, David Clark. The two competing, Ruckman, and there's the board, 70 to 63. Byrne wins the tap, missed by Wallace, comes back to Loveridge. Loveridge goes forward, Norm Goss couldn't quite get to it, Malthouse misses it, comes back towards Goss. Goss the chance of the left foot, but gave it to Tuck. Tuck's kick way off line, just gets in for one point. Michael Tuck has kicked two goals, three, and it's eight points, the margin in favour of the Hawks. Seven, well, almost eight minutes into the final turn. Hawthorne will be trying to get the ball onto the members' wing rather than the outer side because the breeze is favouring the scoreboard end goal from the members' wing. Though goals can be kicked from either side, but it is much better to be on the side I've mentioned. Martello defending to the outer side. Payton will set himself against Dunn, neither take the mark. At the back, it's been picked up by Wallace. He goes goalward, looking for Ablett, can't take the mark. It's down in front of the pack, could have been a free kick to Malthouse. Yes, must be, Jack. And the umpire has paid that way. And Michael Malthouse goes for the hand pass. Oh, dangerous. Martello under a bit of pressure, the kick off the side of the boot slightly. Still kept it in play, and goes uh, go, when tackles against Egan. Full play on by the umpire, the loose ball comes out to Polkinghorn, over the top to Byrne. Byrne dummied the hand pass and now goes toward goal, across the face of goal and through for one point. Well, Hawthorne doing the attacking in the final quarter here, well, so far, anyhow, nine minutes into the final quarter we are now, and Hawthorne have opened up a nine-point lead over Richmond, 9-18 to 7-21. Martello once again will defend to the outer side, Dunn will oppose Byrne, the good kick sends the, the pack back, Mark can't be taken, Chris Mew picks up, kicked it very quickly down toward Matthews, and it's a mark to the man in front. I thought it was the man in front, Buck and Ari's paid the other way. And Mervyn Kane of Richmond. Kane with a nice kick towards centre wing. Mew punts the ball down the ground. Well taken by Waitman, he's tackled too high and called play on now. He got the hand pass out to Reigns. Reigns drives the ball towards Bartlett, can't take the mark. It's well picked done. up by Robinson, who's been a wonderful player for Hawthorne. Takes one bounce, runs his full distance, too far in fact. The free kick is uh, going against the Hawks. Well, the crowd don't realise that there's a free kick upfield. The mark was taken down on the forward line, but the uh, the ball will go right back to the centre wing position where Bobby Skilton told you that Robertson did run too far and has been penalised for that. So Richmond will go into the tag to attack. You can hear the boos from the people who don't actually watch the umpire. Reigns driving it out towards half forward. O'Halloran in the front position must be paid. I thought that time I thought it was the man at the back. Oh, hello, and goes for the short pass and finds Chris Mew, who's really come into the game and been a fine player since half time. The hand pass from Mew to Goad. Goad's uh, kick goes past Matthews. He's going on, tries to keep the ball in play, can't quite do so. And so a boundary throwing to take place. And, uh, well, virtually the half forward flank for Hawthorne. Hawthorne doing most of the attacking in this quarter. They do have the advantage of the breeze, and at the present stage, they're holding a nine point lead. And they're in attack, as Bob told you, on the outer side. Payton will oppose Emma Dunn. Goss awaits the ball at the back of the pack, which didn't come. It's in the front of the pack with a... Oh, it could have been a push in the back. The umpire said a free kick going Richmond's way. Looks like Barry Rollins. No, it's not. Out there is Dale Waitman, getting the ball up to Jess. Has it knocked away from him? Oh, a tackle might have been a bit high to Green. He breaks away. Had a shot toward goal. The kick travelling well. It's over the... No, a good mark to Martello, I thought. a goal on the board, <laughs> I'd be with you Jack Edwards, that for mine was definitely a mark, call play on, Lee 
Matthews quick on the scene, kicked the ball off the ground to bring up full points to the Hawks, but if that wasn't a man, I don't know what is. Oh, speechless. <laughs> Well, I told you when the quarter started, free kicks and things are hard to get today. Well, no, I, I backed myself up. Hawthorne in front, 78 playing 63. Byrne coming in to do the tap work, can't get it. Taken by Wiley, out to Rowlings. Rowlings going forward for Richmond, up it goes. It's a high one. Roach in front can take the mark, and that he does in front of O'Hallon. Could have been a 15-metre penalty, but the umpire will not apply that. I think both players were unbalanced. The umpire will bring O'Halloran back on the mark. Roach has kicked four goals. He'll be trying for his fifth, and the Richmond fans hope and trust he can get it. I've seen a few shots missed from here, about 40 metres out and kicking nearly into the teeth of the breeze. Of all the players who've kicked today, though, Jack, Roach has been the most dependable. All right, see how he goes. A kick from Roach. And once again, he's dependable. Goal number five. Five goals to Michael Roach, Michael Roach, and you can see the scoreboard. It was... 8, 10, 18, 78, a nine-point advantage now to the Hawks, 8, 21, 69. An unfortunate spectator leaving the ground in a manner that we hope uh, does not happen too often. Back to the centre bounds. Byrne got there, but he was beaten for the tap. It comes out now to Jess. He'll put the ball in long. Up it goes. The pack will set themselves. O'Halloran Roach. It's punched down to the front. Chance for Waitman. Polking Horn grabs hold of Waitman. Will be a free kick. So Polking Horn will uh, relieve the pressure for the Hawks. Did I say Polking Horn grabbed hold of Waitman? I meant the other <laughs> way around. Waitman grabbed hold of Polking Horn. There's the kick by Polking Horn down towards Payton. He tried to get it to ground. He did. Got in there himself to try and get it out and he's being dragged away from the ball as umpire Bryant came in to indicate a bounce will take place on the half forward flank, nearly wing position on the member's side of the ground. Richmond in attack by about or 10 or 15 metres. 13 minutes have gone in the final term. Cloak and Byrne, Payton come over the top, but um, either one of the players have given away a free kick and David Cloak of Richmond will take that free kick. Well, he'll be hopeful for a high mark now because uh, he has Roach down there and Taylor all calling for the ball. He's kicking into the breeze and kicks dropping short and no one can mark it. It's a chance for Mew to get a hand pass out. That he does. He gave it out to Goad. Goad putting the ball in toward the half-forward zone and the mark should be taken, has been taken by Bacanara. Shoots it out again to Chris Mew. Mew placing the ball out wide to Ablett and a beautiful pass. Well, this is where I sit in the uh, second turn, Jack, which would have to be a, a miraculous kick. He's probably... 10 or 15 metres further out than when he kicked that goal in the second quarter and I believe the odds would be against him repeating the dose. Well, we'll see how he goes. Gary Ablett keeping the ball down fairly low and it's a well-judged Mark Destroy who plays on quickly. Kicked the ball, was pushed in the back by Tuck but the ball now trickles over the boundary line. So Hawthorne have the ball in a position they would prefer rather than being on the outer side forward pocket area. They would prefer to be on this member's side. They'll be about 40 metres out from goal when the throw-in is affected. It's come out the back of the pack. Hand pass from Kennedy comes out to Wallace, who balks one, balks two. Has a hurried kick. It goes straight up in the air. Matthews will do the roving for the crumb. There he is now, but Rowling's got the good tap. And it comes to Rowling, who puts it up toward the half-forward position. No mark is taken. Sarah does the roving for, for Richmond. He's bundled aside. It's tapped out. The chance for Kennedy to kick in long. He puts it down up to the full forward zone with a player set himself. Really a great mark, but call play on, which it had to be. And now the umpire said there will be a free kick going the way of the Richmond team, and it will be taken by Brian Wood. So Wood now down right on the defensive line. Goal line virtually. Punched away by Green, the chance of a score as Wallace picks the ball up, goes for the short pass, a lovely pass, puts Buckenara right on the chest, he's at centre-half forward and in perfect position to bring a score on the ball. Gary Buckenara, only 45 metres out, directly in front, he's yet to put a goal on the board, an ideal position to kick from. And that's exactly what it shows as Buckenara puts it through the centre, his first. Number 11 to Hawthorne, 11 18 to Richmond, 8 21. Nice piece of work by Wallace Bob to get him that uh, short pass into Bacanara as he did, and Bacanara, as you said, in a perfect position to score. The breeze nearly straight behind him, and he made the distance all right. So Hawthorne now have a handy little lead over Richmond, but a long way to go. Yep, we've been playing 16 minutes of final quarter. Byrne coming in, 
beaten by Cloak. New had it, got a hand pass out of trouble, goes to Bacchanara again. He's tried to bounce it like a basketball, couldn't do so. The umpire has called play on, or has he? Now deciding that it's time to have a bounce. So it's on centre wing out of side. Richmond need a goal, they need it quickly. Hawthorne to try and consolidate their position, want to get the ball down to their scoring zone, and here it comes. A lovely tap from Byrne to Goss, on to Wallace. Towards Matthews, it's punched away. Matthews traps the ball, keeps it on, on the on in play, hooks the ball down towards the forward pocket. Ablett's in there, but it's punched through by Big Martella. Only one more point to Hawthorne, 11 goals, 20. Richmond 8, 21. It was 11, 19. The scoreboard was a bit quick. They anticipated that. 11, 19, 85 it is to 8, 21, 69. A good kick toward Welsh. Can't take the mark. A chance now for Wiley. Hand pass comes up. And Cloak gets it out to Wiley again. A short pass into Jess, and he takes the mark. I won't say within scoring range. He's out about 55 to 16 metres. The breeze right in his face. Well, Jess is capable of uh, kicking the ball mammoth distances. He's hooked it and threw for one point. So Jimmy Jess wins his first score of the game. One point. Richmond, 8-22-60. Trailing by... Uh, but, uh, no, no, I seven. thought it was going to say 70, and uh, the board a little slow there, Jack. Yes, it was. We should go by our screen. There's Kelvin Moore kicking out in full back position, punched on. Good feet from two. The ball comes straight to go. He taps it on again, and Tuck going for the short pass finds Bacchanara. Yes, well, Bacchanara, after that last kick, Jack, capable of making the distance from there. Yeah, this is a little bit trickier, this one. The breeze will be across his kick from his left to right hand side, but he can make the distance if he used a torpedo punt. Could get there with a drop punt. Torpedo punt he elects to use, and he's allowed too much for the breeze, and it won't score. It's out of bounds on the full. He certainly had enough length in the kick, didn't he? Yes, Jack, and Alan Martello. Did think about, feel about going across goals, but now has forced to keep the ball on the attacking side of the ground for the Hawks. Peyton up home and a lovely mark over the top by Jeff Rains. Beautiful judgment by Rains on that occasion. He'll be looking for Jim Jess. I can't see any short passes on. Goes towards Cloak. Jess will fly high, but Cloak picks up the crumb like a rover. Gets going now, getting the ball moving into the forward pocket. It's going to go over the boundary line, not on the full, so it will be a boundary throw-in in the forward pocket for Richmond, right in front of the Carlton Social Club stand, of course. 85 playing 70, Hawthorne leading by 15 points, and the time clock coming up to the 19-minute mark. You're watching the final quarter on Sevens Big League at Prince's Park, and O'Halloran got the punch to clear the pack. Good roving by Wiley, good shot toward goal too. Very good attempt, and it will be a mark. It will be a mark. Yes, the umpire has paid the mark to Taylor, and it's going to be a, a difficult angle, but he should be able to kick his second goal. He's only out about 10 to 12 metres from where he'll kick, so there's no excuses, uh, really, he can run around, I think he's got enough room. He's going to take the deliberate shot toward goal, this will tighten the scores up if he gets it. There it goes, and it's a goal to Richmond. Hawthorne, 11-19-85, Richmond, 9-22-76. Well, Richmond's still hanging in there with that chance, and that's uh, just the side way you'd expect from a team with the ability and... Uh, skills of the Richmond side. Nine points. 20 minutes have gone, so approximately 10 minutes left. And uh, needless to say, Jack, it's absolutely anybody's game. Yes, no quarter. The first quarter was the longest, in which there were five goals kicked that went 30 minutes and 10 seconds, so it won't go any longer than that. Richmond coming back again through Sarah. The hand pass is long, but taken by Green. He ran himself into trouble, gave it to Polkinghorne. Not a good hand pass from Polkinghorne. Well picked up by Tuck. Clever football. He's going to have a crack at them. Tuck goes from 60 metres out. He puts it on its way. That's a great goal by Michael Tuck. His third goal. Richmond, 9-22-76. Hawthorne, 12-19-91. That, Jack, was the sign of a class play. Great goal, great goal. The way he won the ball for starters was enough. And then to be able to break for the five yards and the metres, and then steady, beautiful football. Cloak and Byrne, the two competing ruckmen. Byrne up the highest, got the ball down, then actually, I think, took it away from Wallace. Emmett Dunn got it back. Desperate football as it comes to Rollins of Richmond. Rollins kicked straight to Jimmy Jess. Jess getting the call over the top from Bartlett. 
The short kick goes forward, but Roach is up. Brought down by O'Halloran. Chris Mew comes out, takes the risk of a bounce, and then puts the long kick forward. Emmett Dunn's in the centre of the ground and takes a timely mark. Emmett Dunn about oh, five or six metres on the defensive side of the centre line, looking up toward Big Cloak. The kick is put in that direction. He sets himself to take the mark. Mew over the back went for spoil. Did it well. Well rode on this occasion by Reigns. Putting the ball out wide for Bartlett. Bartlett and Robertson doing battle near the boundary line. Bartlett's got around so far from away from Robertson. Finds Jess. Jess unattended. Good play, Bartlett. Good play by Bartlett, all right. Jess was unattended. And I see John Kennedy having a, a bit of a chat at his uh, opponent there. Jimmy Jess. Take the shot for goal. Can he get it? Looks good from here. What well, is it, a goal, I think? Yes, a goal picked by Jimmy Jess. 10 22, 8 and 2. Richmond, Hawthorne, 12 19, 91. Well, a wonderful pressure goal by Jimmy Jess. Uh, Jess going across now to thank Kevin Bartlett. Bartlett hasn't had many kicks at all today. He's been uh, closely held by uh, Colin Robertson, but that was a beautiful piece of football and uh, it's a sign of a class player when you come on and uh, you keep at it and do as uh, Bartlett did then. Byrne got the ball down to Matthews. Matthews puts a long kick down. It's a bad bounce for Martello, but uh, can't be picked up by Ablett. Martello taps the ball over the boundary and uh, we find a throw in to take place in the forward pocket. Time clock getting around towards the 23 minute mark now. You're watching the final quarter here at Princess Park between Hawthorne and Richmond. 91 playing 82, only nine points of difference. Hawthorne in front. Peyton got the ball over the back. The player reading it well was Rollings. Rollings' kick goes over the head of Matthews, but the bounce is good for Lee Matthews. It comes back, he steadies. Puts a high kick down to the forward area. In Michael Tuck at the back, waiting for it there. It comes through to Tuck, but he can't gather the ball in. It's over the boundary line. A throwing to take place right alongside the behind pass. Hawthorne in front, as I told you, by nine points. They are in attack. Boundary throw in from the forward pocket position. Peyton opposing Dunn. Dunn taps it down, picked up by Goss, shoots at goal, but off target only one behind. So it's still Hawthorne in front by 10 points now on the time clock, 23 and a half minutes into the final quarter. Big Alan Martello looking to the outer side. Now he changed his mind and goes up the centre, but kicks straight towards Lee Matthews, who can't take the mark. Bit cloak there, a chance in front of Byrne. Gibby chases Matthews, but Cloak picks up now. He's run a good 10. Now he's tackled by Matthews, brought to ground. Call play on. Could be out of bounds, I feel. And that's what it is. Great play by Matthews to, to keep at it. And uh, a lesson for all players. That, uh, no matter whether you're um, chasing behind or not, you have to keep at it and put applied pressure. Michael Byrne of Hawthorne. David Cloak of Richmond. Cloak got the tap over the back. Taken by Lee Matthews. His kick up towards centre wing. Barry Rollins is there. Go, the bounce goes awkwardly for Rollins. It's uh, close. In fact, it's over the boundary line before Rollins can gather it in. It's on the half forward flank for Hawthorne on the outer side of the ground, so 80 metres out from goal. Where the throw will take place. Peyton opposing Dunn. Peyton hooked the ball in, tried to get a hand pass out. Wasn't that effect? has been chopped off. The kick picked up by Strawn towards centre half forward. No mark taken. Mew of Hawthorne gets the short kick out towards centre wing. Matthews coming through. Couldn't gather it in cleanly, but then, in typical Matthews fashion, gathered it up, put the ball out towards centre wing, it goes over the boundary line, and I'm sure the Hawks would be happy to at least have the ball there. Yes, it's on their half-forward flank nearly, it's just down from the wing position. Time on to be played, Jack, so... Yeah, right at the 25-minute mark, so Hawthorne in good shape, they're leading by 10 points, but now it appears that Emmett Dunn will take the free kick, he goes for a long hand pass, he finds a teammate too, and it's uh, Richmond about to go into attack. On the boot of Mervyn Kane, Kick dropping short, and Kennedy takes the mark. Gives the hand pass across. Hawthorne will be a chance of going right into attack. The short kick coming forward. Wallace is there, should give the hand pass over the top to Tuck. Tuck gives a short pass. It'll be an awkward one for Gary Abbott with Martello coming straight at him. And uh, the, no and mark, Payne. Hey. Yes, he did play it. Payne a free kick against uh, Martello. And uh, Abbott would be a chance of scoring from here, Jack. Yes, you'll get the shot of the cameras in a moment. He's kicked two goals there. There's the angle now. The distance would be around about, oh, it's 50-odd metres, but the breeze will be a, to his advantage. might be more than 50 metres, right on the half-forward flank. So it'll take a good kick, but it should get assistance from the breeze. Well, not quite on target. Might get through, or it might be out of bounds. Might be a point. The umpire said yes, only just got in for one behind. But in doing so, Bob, it keeps the ball down at Hawthorne's scoring end, so 
I don't think they'd be too worried at this stage of the game. Malthouse coming in from the full-back position. Putting the ball out wide, looking for Cloak. Cloak and Burn. Cloak, oh, strong mark. Good play. Burn trying to do everything right and punch the ball away. Cloak showing great strength. Now gives a hand pass over the top. Picked up by Brian Wood. Wood shows the speed and then steadies and puts the ball up long. But it's all Hawthorne. It doesn't matter because it's gone over the boundary line. But there were three Hawthorne players and not a Richmond player on the scene. Hawthorne in front by 11 points over Richmond and we've been playing 26 and a half minutes of the final quarter which you're watching of course on Sevens Big League. Big punch by Byrne. That cleared the pack a chance for Tuck if he can get there first. Picked it up well. Shot the ball down toward Matthews. Didn't get a good bounce. It's running toward the boundary line. Goss is after it but I think it may beat him over the boundary line. No, it's still in play. I think it's, oh. been, it's been signalled out, Jack. Yes, it has been now because the umpire is now coming down to throw the ball in. I think the... Uh, the field umpire gave that decision more than the boundary umpire. It's on Hawthorne's half-forward flank on the outer side of the ground where the throw will take place. Hawthorne in front by 11 points. This could be a real boil over today because Richmond would be favourite to take the game out. Yes, and against any other side, Jack, you would uh, say that at this stage Hawthorne would be laid down Mazeb. But they're playing Richmond and uh, anything can happen against a side like Oops. Richmond. But the bad bounce for Martello. A chance now that Martello kicks it off the ground. Good play. Russell Green trying to gather it in. He's under pressure from Martello. Still keeps at it. Malthouse took the ball away. We then see Martello come back again, try to tap the ball forward, almost thrown up. And the pushing the back goes away of Russell Green. So because he was first to the ball and making the play, Green gets the chance of putting the ball forward. And if he can go from here, it would seal the game. Well, it would be out about 40 metres, I would think. And the breeze right behind him. So he's trying to line this up now. He wants to score. He wants a goal, of course. No one on the mark. Here comes Green now. 40 metres out from goal. Gone for the short pass. <laughs> He's filled them all. He shot a short pass in. Everyone thought he'd go. There's Wallace coming off the ground now for Ali DeWald. But he shot a short pass out to Matthews. Good thing. I was just thinking, Jack, of all the players to leave on their own on the forward line. <laughs> Lee Matthews with three on the board. The kick from Matthews. It looks like four. And the goal umpire indicates four. So Hawthorne, 13 21 to 10 22. A lead of. Is it Jack? 17 points. And that Jack is the biggest margin that either side has held throughout the day. Hawthorne in front, as Bobby told you, by 17 points at the closing stages of the final quarter. We are now at the 29 minute mark. So it appears that Richmond will lose their first game for season 1982 to Hawthorne, a side that can never be underestimated. Michael Byrne sets himself at the centre bounce, as does Cloak. The ball rises high. Byrne got the tap down. Missed by DeWald, missed it again. Still a pack forming up in there. No one can do it. anything clean with the ball. And the umpire said a bounce will take place. The time clock has now gone past the 29-minute mark. And Hawthorne are leading by 17 points. A bounce almost in the centre of the ground. 10 metres towards the outer side. Punched on by Cloak. Taken by Jimmy Jess. Jess screws the ball over the shoulder. Kennedy taps the ball away from Waitman. Good play by Kennedy. It should have been a free kick to Waitman. Robertson in fine style takes the ball away. A high kick towards the half forward position. Brian Wood, the only one to go for the mark, takes a well judged one. Brian Wood at centre half back looking up toward Cloak with a kick dropping short. Not a good kick. It might bounce to Cloak, though it's over his head. Taken by Loveridge. He nearly threw that one out to Burn. He shoots a hand pass to Colby Horn. He can kick it toward the square. Polting Horn going goalward. Alan Martello st uh, stands his ground to take a fine mark on the end of the square. He's going out wide. He should be going up the ground if they wish to win because time's running out. The clock indicates 30 minutes have gone, Jack. So uh, Barry Rollins puts the ball forward. Wiley takes a timely mark. They waste no time at all to play on and drive it towards centre-half forward. O'Halloran from behind punches the ball away. Took it on the second grab. It's picked up again by Kelvin Moore. Moore's the kick wobbling around in the air but Jeff Rains under the ball couldn't take the mark tapped out by Rains but he was held on the arm so Jeff Rains will take the kick he's taking the kick from the centre of the ground Richmond needed a couple of quick goals but can't see them getting them Rains kicks high in they come oh it's a chance now for Matthews to get the ball right down to the half forward flank no he's pushed in the back the umpire's called play on Matthews taps it out once again and it's all Hawthorne as Goad is having time to give it to a polking horn he'll have a bounce and steady Give the hand pass across to DeWald. Well, DeWald coming towards centre half forward, puts it down towards the forward pocket and it bounces through for one point. So it's exactly three goals straight. 13-22 to 10-22. 18 points in favour of the Hawks. 
Martello waiting for the arrival of the ball from the full back position will go to the outer side. Not much point in doing that. He should come straight up the middle. And that he decides to do. Looking for Cloak. Opposed to burn the side of the sands. And at Princess Park, Hawthorne 13-22, 100 points, have defeated Richmond 10-22-82.